scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. yourself that all you get in God's presence is just the word worship teaching then you share the grace you must always come into God's presence expecting him to move in any way and to do anything believe me you may not know the kinds of activations that are happening to people right now in this place see Church is not designed just to be a place where you come and sit down and watch people and laugh. There are times that all you need is to come and press into an encounter. That you step out of that meeting and all of a sudden your sensitivity, something has happened. All of a sudden you find out that the burdens are lifted. All of a sudden you find out that the chains are broken. All of a sudden you find out that the power that comes from the throne does something to your life. This is what his presence does. See? That all of a sudden in that atmosphere when the spirit of prophecy the Bible says the testimony of Jesus every time the true spirit of prophecy comes into a place all of a sudden the spirit of God meeting the needs of people touching people challenging people opening them up explaining to you your encounters of the secret place showing you why the things that happen happen giving meaning to your encounters this is the only way church will not be boring yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Listen, all I'm seeing in the spirit is light, light falling on people. That's all I'm seeing. It's an illumination, strong impartation of light. That's what is happening all over the building. God is opening the eyes of men, giving explanations. For some of you, the light that is coming is direction. Strange direction by the Spirit. Some of you, this light that is coming is answered prayers. That's the answer to prayers. Coming as that light from the throne.
Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Let me tell you something. Many of us have robbed the Holy Spirit from finding expression. Some of these songs you see me coming, bringing from the Spirit. Many of us, God has been wanting to pass through you. But this rigidity we put, there is, there is a sense of religion. I am busy trying to make money, trying to read books, trying to be successful. We, our spirits are not malleable enough for the Holy Spirit to pass through us. The restraint is too much. That's why we don't get the sound. That's why our discernment is very low. Because we are busy. It takes, it takes staying in the present. Let me tell the truth. You will never touch certain frequencies in the spirit. When you are busy around trying to combine spirituality and many other things. The presence of God is a full time assignment. You must stay. Stay until the sound comes. Stay until the melodies come. Stay until the power comes. For when he comes, he comes with light. For when he comes, he comes with ease. For when he comes, he comes with illumination. Many of you have been praying, Oh Lord, take me to a new level. It's not just by prayer. Stay in the present. Stay in the glory. That's the key. That's the secret. It's not just moving around. No, the glory doesn't just fall overnight. When you stay, your spirit man begins to acclimatize to the frequency of the spirit. That's how it works. It's not a hit and run thing. You just rush and come out. And then you want to hear with accuracy. Then you want his glory to flow. It doesn't work like that. There is a, there is a staying. There is a staying. I tell you. It's a law. You must stay. The church has learned to hurry God. And we are hurrying the glory of God out of our lives. There are many of you here, listen. When you started out with God, you had the time and the staying power. But I don't know what it is that has happened. God is challenging us. That secret place is now a strange place for many of us. We are busy doing ministry. We are busy trying to make a living. We are busy trying to move around. The church has lost the art of the secret place. The secret place is not a place, it's a place where you stay like a waiter. Stay until his glory comes. And then when his glory comes, there is a signature upon your life. Undeniable. The secret place is the place of power. The secret place is the place where you have a message if God does not sit upon you with his glory you have no message you can talk it's not about Rema it's about the presence that follows it you can preach all you can but there is a glory this is a testament of his visitation upon your life that's what creates impact that's what breaks chains I like you to pray and say Lord show me your glory greater levels of your glory please pray expose me to that realm superior dimensions of your glory I have tasted of your glory I have seen what your grace can do but Lord there is a desperation within my spirit to taste of something tangible hey. sit down if you can for those who can sit there will be many impartations the spirit of prophecy is strong in this place night
Some of you will never recover from tonight's meeting. I tell you, you will not even know what is happening to you. It's an encounter. Listen, listen. If you're a man of God in this place, I submit to you. You are wasting the time of God's people if you cannot convey the presence to that atmosphere. Yeah. That's how habits are broken. That's how chains are broken. That's how impartations happen. It's not just by laying on of hands. How many people can you lay your hands on? Let the glory come and there is transformation. Let the glory come and something is happening in people. Let the glory come and testimonies, sicknesses. Many of you are sitting down right now and sicknesses will just disappear. No, it can't stand the glory. Prayer lives have been revived. Different dimensions of the spirit. That's why the place is called Koinonia. It's not a place of discussion. It's an atmosphere of encounter. Lord, let nothing restrain your hand in the midst of your people. Let nothing restrain your hand. Don't rob God from finding a vessel in you. Don't rob God from finding a truly anointed vessel in you. See, let me tell you something. If you follow these rubbish people are doing of just visiting God's presence to come and receive breakthrough and prosperity and power and rush back, you will never find God that way. Please believe me when I tell you this. God is not an object you use. You see that? There are some of us, our gifts are dormant for a very long time. Very long time. That press in the spirit to activate you listen it's an anomaly when you remain in the same spiritual level for a very long time something is wrong and when you are rising it's obvious everybody knows that there is a transition some of us are in the same position for a very long time because we are giving god barely enough see that there are some of us our dreams have ceased our visions have ceased. Our encounters have ceased. Our passion for his glory has ceased. Listen, every time the experience you used to have with God ceases, something stopped it. It never stops by default. Are we together now? There are many of us, you used to see things before they happen. Right now, it has dried up out of nothing because you are trying to look for a wife or look for a husband. Hallelujah. Dry up. There's nothing there again. No power. No grace. All these things we keep making noise around within church. One person falls down. One person falls down and we jump around. That's nonsense. There are higher dimensions. There are superior levels in the spirit. Beyond calling names and phone numbers. There is the spirit, not the gift of prophecy. There is the very spirit of it. The very operation of the prophetic realm. Where people receive testimonies of Jesus without you speaking any message. The spirit of prophecy. Men live with encounters they cannot explain. No matter how hardened you are, when you come into this atmosphere, something must surrender. That's what happens when his presence comes. You cannot change men by the excellency of persuasions. No. It doesn't work that way. The presence. That's what brings transformation. The presence. That's what brings change. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's only a price that very few desire to pay. Because we like things cheap. We like things easy. 
anything that commits us we do not want we want results but we hate process oh we want to be mightily used you want to stand and see the glory of god move around brother there is a prize it's not a gift it's a reward it's a reward for diligence it's a reward for surrender it's a reward for total yieldedness i used to hear benny Hinn say it total yieldedness that's the price for the anointing total yieldedness not half-hearted yieldedness how many musicians are here you have not brought one song from the spirit it's, it's, a, it's an indictment on your call it's an indictment of on your gift there are melodies in the spirit like waves but there is a frequency with which your spirit must rise to and then you will capture these things the the level of the sophistication of your spirit is the level to which you will capture many of us our prayer lives have died gone cold gone cold gone cold you only pray until you feel tired see let me tell you why many of us our prayer lives are not effective we are only praying to justify prayer you don't pray for the purpose of touching realities in the spirit you see that yes you're at, you can pray and then after one hour or two hours you can say i have tried that's a different you are only praying to be better than somebody else but there is a way you come with a desperation and you pray that your spirit will make contact if that contact happens in 10 minutes you end if that contact happens in five hours you continue see it's not about religion but it starts with a desperation a desperation a desire the first message the Lord is communicating tonight is let there be a revival in your spirit man get back those mantles and those gifts wherever you threw them let those dreams come alive again because in those dreams are the puzzles of your destiny a little here a little there before the year runs out, we're going to take a teaching on angels and the ministry of angels. You see, many of us have lost touch with spiritual reality. It's dangerous in this time and age to just move sensually. That the limit of your perception is a three-dimensional realm. You will be a victim of too many things. You've got to access a frequency that is higher than the material realm. To supply you the strength and the illumination. hallelujah I challenge everyone here there is more that God can do with your life if you will give him space God is not a boyfriend he's not a girlfriend he's not looking for an affair he wants a relationship a very serious one you give God an affair you will get nothing out of it if God is one of the many important things in your life Believe me, you will never find him. Believe me, you will never find him. Listen, listen. This desire is not for men of God. This desire is for everyone who wants God. Don't you think that this bias is for pastors? No, no. The spirit of man was designed to only find satisfaction in his presence. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup that pulls you on dry. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that pulls you on dry. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven. Sing it just one more time. 
Your presence, Your presence is heaven. Is Your presence is heaven to Your me. presence is heaven to me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. God bless you especially for our visitors and many who are coming for the first time. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now today our meeting will be very different we are going to take I'll respond to a few questions and answers praise the Lord the Holy Spirit put it in my heart there are so many of us that have questions about the Holy Spirit about encounters spiritual growth will give us an opportunity maybe 30 minutes and then I'll just minister to people there are people who need to be ministered to and so that's what we're going to do help us with another mic please um, now I know that, please listen, many of us have questions, especially as regards intimacy, encounters, our spiritual lives. I'm trusting that God will grant grace. We'll use all the questions as a message and just communicate it. And please, I want you to feel free. Make sure that you ask questions that are applicable to our spiritual growth, not just something that is a bias. For some of us, is something regards prayer your prayer life um your word life if there's no mic you can i can take one and then you can use this hallelujah and so um because it's not only important to teach there are some of us who have encountered certain challenges maybe in the dispensing of the gift of the spirit in our lives or anything that has to do with the Holy Spirit and intimacy and our spiritual growth and I'm trusting that God will grant us um, a few minutes that's deliverance happening to her something is leaving her that devil of darkness leave her right now in the name of Jesus Christ there's one other lady with this same situation right now in this place the power of God is coming upon her. This is a spirit that has been tormenting her. Lord, wherever that lady is right now, I declare deliverance by the power of the Holy Spirit. That lady is in the congregation here in the name of Jesus Christ. It's like fire that will come upon you. I judge that spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, I decree judgment. I pass a note of judgment to that wicked spirit. That is bringing oppression praise the lord so we're going to have a little q and a and i'll respond and maybe uh, on one or two occasions we can allow one or two people to respond the questions will bless many of us because it will answer it will attempt to answer or solve some of the puzzles that are around our lives i don't want our spiritual lives to be um, without accuracy some of us may have been making the same mistake for a long time that's why we are not getting certain results spiritually hallelujah some of us may be pressing into God for instance there are people who press into God but necessarily they find out that they are always backsliding not that they are sleeping around or doing anything immoral but that staying power is like there is a spiritual meter every time you get to a dimension it pulls you back you are making progress but the graph is not straight it's like it goes up forces you down then you have to pray and fast your way there are many of us who do not know how to command strength in the spirit like a gentleman who uh, i think someone sent me a text i don't know if he's here he sent me a text in the afternoon um, and he said every time he's in the presence of god or anytime he's talking to people about the glory of god he starts yawning mysteriously like yawning and um, some of you are already nodding in agreement it's happening to me too what is the meaning of that <laughs> are you yawning out demons are you absorbing the glory what exactly is happening so um please be smart don't be rude to the protocol people just walk as they direct you 
we're going to have a few questions um i will use the questions some of the questions will actually culminate to teachings and i'll use the opportunity and just address things don't be biased make sure that you ask things that are relevant if your question is not relevant to our meeting we'll ignore it is that all right let's pray in one minute and say father speak to me go ahead and pray Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, so um, we'll come in threes. We'll just have the first three. They will stand. And then if there's any need. So let me see by wave of hands. I'll point people out. Okay, number one, you can stand up. Come. Second, number two. And then um, let's have a lady figure. All right, that lady waving her hands in blue. Come quickly. Appreciate them as they come. Be smart. Tell us your name straight to the point if you're wasting our time please we'll, we'll send you to your seats let me tell you in advance so you are not embarrassed go ahead turn to the congregation god bless you go ahead okay good evening sir is it working yes sir um good evening sir thank you yes, bless sir. you yes sir my question is um about visions visions yes sir what, what are they visions okay yes sir what are they and are visions a sign of spiritual growth okay. that's um like spiritual visions are they limited to a particular set of people people who do not have them as frequently as are they growing? yes are they is it a sign that they are growing okay i, I want to visions are a dimension of supernatural encounters right um there are many levels dimensions and types of supernatural encounters Visions are just um, a dimension of supernatural encounters that affords a person an opportunity to access realities in the spirit. It could be realities that reveal the past, the present, or the future. You understand? It could also be realities that expose that person to um, spiritual happenings. Now, the whole goal of visions, and, and I want us to pay attention, the whole goal of visions and encounters, any supernatural encounter is prophetic in its dimension. Are we together now? So every time we talk of prophecy, it's not just speaking. Any encounter that exposes you to access any realm beyond the physical is a prophetic dimension. So in every man, there is a prophetic dimension. Let me call it a latent prophetic dimension. Now, those who are called into the prophetic or apostolic office, the advantage of the apostolic office is that on the strength of that office, you can work, you should work in all the fivefold offices because it's an administrative office. It heads and coordinates the spiritual activities. Are we together now? But in a typical prophetic office, by default, the moment you there is an election of grace upon you, inclined towards that prophetic office, there are it's like spiritual configurations by default. Are we together now? Now your spiritual life and your spiritual growth can add to it. But anybody called into the prophetic office or any dimension of prophetic operations, by default can be open to the realm of the spirit that's why you can find people seeing visions who are not born again are we together now remember he told jeremiah the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb i had already called you and ordained you to be a prophet are, are we clear now so visions and generally all supernatural encounters are a dimension of the prophetic and the goal of visions dreams is illumination and direction sometimes also impartation it gives you illumination access to light and information right sometimes it gives you direction but in many cases it also comes with impartation that's why some of us can have dreams have visions encounters we don't exactly know why they came but they leave residues of impartations as we get up and begin our normal life we see that certain possibilities in the spirit has been activated and we may not know at what point it was activated like wisdom like certain virtues do you understand so now but that does not mean listen if you are truly growing spiritually right even if you are not called into the prophetic dimension 
or prophetic realm, if you are growing spiritually, the, the presence of God has a prophetic effect on everyone, whether you're a prophet or not. This is the reason why somebody on the strength of sheer intimacy with the Holy Spirit can access a level that will make him look like a prophet. But in reality, he's not a prophet. He's just one who has pressed into God to an appreciable dimension. It's like an aura of God's presence. Now, the Bible does not use visions and dreams to qualify spiritual growth. Although experience has shown us that as you progress spiritually, you will begin to um, get impulses. It's called spiritual perception. In fact, I preached a message on that. You can get it with the media after the service. Are we, are we understanding now? Because there are some of us here who are praying, we love God, but aside from dreams and maybe what we call intuition, what people like Kenneth Hagin will call the knowing of the spirit, we've not had any supernatural encounter as it were. And sometimes we get intimidated. And I think I must correct that. Because some of us get intimidated because someone is now talking and saying... Um, um, Ogashe who saw something and he's prophesying and he's saying oh I saw something and you you are standing frustrated that you do not have visionary encounters in terms of um, encounters you are awake you are alive and you are caught up or a picture comes before you or the audible voice of God or some kind of supernatural encounters it does not mean you are not growing spiritually are we together now there are two spiritual indices to measure spiritual growth. Number one is your degree of conformity into the image of the Christ. That's the first biblical sign of spiritual growth. So if you are born again and there is no transformation in you, you are not conforming to the image of Christ, believe me, your salvation is questionable. In fact, let me, let me press on this before we continue. There are many people who think they are born again. And, and please, I don't want you to doubt your salvation, but I must be sincere with you. There are many people who think they are born again. And I tell you the truth by the Lord, they are not. They are not saved. The meaning of that is if they die today, they are going to hell. Are we together now? Please, don't, don't trivialize salvation. Salvation is the, is the supplanting of the very life of God in a mortal man. Are we together? The Bible says you are born of the incorruptible seed. Remember? Of the word of God. So there is a seed. The same way a man plants a seed in his wife. What do you expect that seed to do? There should be fertilization. Is that true? And eventually, as time progresses, that seed, right, begins to produce. So you cannot tell me you are born again. Listen, that you are born again. The life of Christ is in you. And you are exposed to the atmosphere of the spirit and progressively we do not see after a prolonged period of time evidences of conformity to the image of christ something is wrong with that salvation are we together now so it's very very important so that's one index the second index is your degree of comprehension the degree to which you are having understanding on the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. So that your degree of conformity. To what degree do I see Christ in you? In fact, Paul puts it this way. He said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. He was talking to people who were already saved. So conformity to the image of Christ. And access to the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. These two will naturally produce empowerment impartation access to the anointing are we together now so that's it about vision god bless you yes sir i appreciate you sir sir i want to know well, what's your name my name is oko sampotensi okay yes when um you there is a signal that an attack is coming on your spiritual life and you you pray against it but then actually you are going down spiritually sorry again you're going down spiritually your spiritual life you are going down spiritually yeah kind of you have an attack is coming on your spiritual life and then you attack from hell construct your question pray, very logical so that everybody prayer, prayer life for instance is your going prayer down life is going down yes and then you you pray you pray against it then a time comes that what the very incidents that causes you to go down finally happens 
although you prayed against it, and it, it happens to, um, you, you feel that, okay, you failed. And then the Spirit comes to um, encourage you that, as if it's, it, it, is, it was proposed by God. Okay, so what is the question? So now? my question now is, when are, are those attacks actually, and after the attack, you grow higher. Are those attacks actually um, ingredients to, for you to grow spiritually, to live you the level it, you are? You mean a demonic attack? Uh, on your spiritual life, for instance. Okay, um, his, his question has many sides to it. I'm not getting exactly what he's asking, but if I understand you well, you mean your prayer life is going down? Yes. Are we together? Yes. And then what happens? There is a, there, there is even a, there is a knowing in you that there, there that, is an attack. Yes. A demonic attack on yes, your life. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then, for instance, there is a, maybe a habit God has delivered you from, and then there is a knowing that um, it's coming back or something. The devil wants to bring and it you back. Pray, yeah. And you pray against it. Let it not be. Let it not be. And Lord. then it still happens. And then it happens. Okay. Then you feel like it's man. It's gone then there is an encouragement that as if this thing is proposed and then after that you feel a lifting higher. Okay. I think I get what you're saying. No, 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 no. It's not a habit. It's not proposed to lift you up spiritually. What you see is an interplay of your carelessness and the mercy of God and the grace of God. There are many things interwoven. So you don't justify that because you grew from it. It meant God brought it. Now we must understand that there are different attributes of God that um it is part of the love of God. Now, love in the spirit is not affection. Love in the spirit is a realm with many dimensions. There is a dimension of love called discipline. There is a dimension of love called judgment. There is a dimension of love called mercy. There is a dimension of love called justice. Are we together? That's why Paul says to know the length, the breadth, and he, he gives love a dimension. So when we say the love of God comes to you, it can come as his goodness. It can, can come as his chastisement. Are we together? It can come as his mercy. Now you are a believer. Number one, we have to examine what made your prayer life to go down. Right? There are two reasons why your prayer life can go down. Number one, it can be the natural fatigue that comes from the spirit and the flesh contending together. According to Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. It says, this I say then, walk ye in the spirit, and you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh. Right? So it says, the flesh lusted after the spirit. The spirit after the flesh, and there is a contention. You get up in the morning, I mean, there are ladies to resist. There is beer to cast away. There, there are all kinds of things to happen. There is bribery and corruption to run away from. At the end of it, after a while, it's like, it's like wear and tear. Your spirit can be fatigued. That's not backsliding. That's simply a tiring because of your faculties that help you interact with the spirit. At that point, the solution is a retreat. Isaiah 40 verse 31. Even the young men can be weary. They can faint. All right? Then, but they that wait upon the Lord. But in a situation where it is an attack, which often happens, there are three seasons where Satan attacks people. Number one, at the birthing of something new. The moment there is something new about to happen in your life, part of the many events that happen is a strange attack that has nothing to do with your spiritual life. You read the Bible and you find out it's not unusual. Right? Very, very important. There is always a strange attack. Revelations. I saw a mystery. A woman who was carrying a man-child about to give birth to that child and a dragon came and stood waiting for the child to come so that she will eat now satan tries to stop you at the time of sowing your seeds any kind of seed spiritual seed if he cannot stop it he will try to stop the gestation period by bringing impatience taking advantage of your human nature that hope deferred makes the heart weary are we together now and if you cannot stop it then he will wait for you at the point of harvest so that he will abort the harvest. These are the three seasons and stages of Satan's attack. So before you start ministry, look at that. He did it to Moses. Stage one, when Moses was about to be birthed and conceived, they wanted to kill all the people. So to abort the destiny from day one. Now that it did not happen, he wanted to implicate Moses. And he caused Moses to kill somebody so that it will affect him. The process. 
and then eventually towards the end of his life he used anger and stopped him from entering so there are three stages of satan's attack are we together we see that even in the life of jesus jesus about to be born his star shines in the east wise men follow him herod wants to kill him are we together then later on again we see that through the process after his baptism satan comes to wait for him and then he tries to jeopardize his destiny by telling him i'll give you the kingdom bow down and since he refused and then he tried and tried and tried all through the lifetime of jesus satan could not get him and then the last stage was in hell when jesus was preparing to defeat all the cohorts of hell and come out all the demons and the principalities were on him to force him to bow and then he rose up and you know that when jesus was about to resurrect what happened they paid some people to lie even when he resurrected he, they guarded the place and when he resurrected they paid some people they said go and lie that the disciples came and stole his body so we see that there are seasons you can actually discern seasons where you know you are liable to attacks except you do not have spiritual intelligence now satan i'm using this are, are we getting blessed is god speaking to us satan is not omniscient there are three attributes that make god sovereign number one is his omnipresence his ability to be everywhere satan is not everywhere job 1 verse 1 from whence comest thou later on you read from running to and fro god doesn't run to and fro his eyes can see everything the all-seeing eyes of god are we together now number two his omniscience his ability to know all things satan does not know all things he works with informations that's why he uses human agents to probe into people that's why satan pursued prophets because he wanted to hear what god was telling them are we together now very important and then number three his omnipotence his ability to have all power once have i spoken twice have we heard that all power belongs to the lord now satan does not have these attributes are we together so satan can discern seasons of breakthrough in your life and that season is usually communicated in the spirit by unusual angelic activities satan was once a cherub and so he understands remember when jacob slept right when you read genesis 28 when jacob slept he saw a ladder there were unusual activities happening are we together now the same thing jesus told nathaniel in john chapter 1 he said you will see many things you see the heavens open and all of that so what happens is that at a point where the devil sees that there are unusual activities or prophecy has revealed what god is about to do that's why when prophecy comes that's not the time to cross your leg paul spoke to his son timothy he said this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you wore a good warfare with the prophecies because prophecy is an announcement it's an unveiling the moment the voice of god prophetically spoke john said behold the lamb and a voice said this is my beloved son satan started chasing him are we together now so when there is an attack it usually is that god is, is trying to do something in your life and satan is trying to raise a counter attack at that point if you understand the mysteries of the kingdom there is a secret to tap into a higher supply of grace are you following me now and that's the power of a retreat isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 they that wait the moment you sense that there is a lot of boisterous activities in your life and you will know it by the intuition of the spirit some of you will see it in dreams some of you will have it in visions some of you prophecies will come to you and many of us who are used to rejecting prophecy now Prophecy must not be exalted above the word of God. However, it's important to many times pay attention to it. Especially when it's coming from vessels that know God and are credible. It's important to pay attention. Praise the Lord. Very, very important. So, when there is an attack and it is a demonic attack, if it prevails over you, an attack is inevitable on the saints. And it's not a surprising thing. The surprise, however, is when Satan prevails. Are we together now? Because even in heaven there was war. The Bible said there was war in heaven. That, that dragon, Lucifer, he rose. An archangel, Michael, also rose. But Satan prevailed not. 
there was no place found for him and he was casted to the earth and there was a lamentation woe to the inhabitants of the earth you know satan that old serpent he has come with anger and great fury are we together now so if there is an attack an affliction the secret is prayer and it's in a secret place so if your prayer life died is because you did not build momentum before that time are we together that's the reason why it is important for every believer to have what we call it's like a spiritual bank it's like an energy bank so your daily prayer the bible says redeeming the time that's the mystery there are two words that are used time in the greek there is chronos and there is kairos chronos is the passage of time kairos is an opportune time or a set time the bible uses these two words in the book of psalms it said thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time chronos to favor her yea the kairos when you translate it to hebrew the set time are we together now so there is a set time an opportune time where major things happen between heaven there is serious business between you and heaven and at that time the devil knows and he will launch attacks so what you do is you build a spiritual fortification both spiritual intelligence and capacity in the place of prayer so that at such time it will sustain you the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle what was wrong your strength your spiritual strength now is small so if you fell in that attack it's because your strength was small are we together let's assume let's use something maybe pornography are we together now and it's something god had delivered you from and you sense that the devil is trying to drive you again into porn, uh, pornography are we together now and then you fell to it that falling is not a test that falling is not the furnace of affliction we're talking about that you fell simply because your spirit did not sustain the strength and the energy to scale through but then in the midst of it the dimension of god's love called mercy comes in so don't confuse it that because you learn more from that situation it means it was god that orchestrated it god simply took advantage of it and allowed his mercy to prevail so that in your rising you will now rise better stronger and more anointed this is what makes god love are you getting it now but that does not mean god intended for you to necessarily fall the falling is simply the limitation of your spirit man i don't know if you understand what i'm saying yes sorry uh, this is there are many people if yeah. you ask two two questions please if you come out after two questions you go and sit down and hope that somebody will ask your question are we together yeah um, this has been happening i will see some things i won't i will not know how to inquire for the meaning and when it happens later sometimes they are not good at times it posi it's positive you will what sorry see for instance you will see yeah, things yeah, visions yeah. yes now. now like there was a time i saw myself traveling with a lady and when it came i didn't understand what it meant when it came to, traveling with a lady uh, to, a, a vision. To, to a place yes when it to came where? to a place i didn't know we were going okay, to a place. okay no so location the, okay the reality was that the person was under attack and i was the one to lead her to the prayer place i uh, uh, just and that, that oh, was you where, held and you were taking her yeah, to a place okay that's where she got her this thing but i didn't understand the meaning then now recently i saw a, a lady my cosmate um pick a bag and was traveling i didn't know what it meant the next day uh she actually told me she was tra she was traveling to a place i said what for it says somebody just died there now i understood that and uh, maybe we were if we had prayed about the journey and all of that if it was a bad one so how does one my question is how would one be uh, how would one know the meaning of the pictures you are seeing at the time of the vision to help your direction in prayers okay god bless you now there are two things here that our attempt to respond to i, I don't know if we understand his question but um after this we'll take three people from outside before we continue so protocol help us we'll get the three people from outside who have questions please you see how time is going if you come and you ask a question that doesn't make sense we have agreed as a congregation that we're sending you back please we intend to grow and we want to redeem the time are we together so please before you come make sure you are prepared not to disgrace yourself are we together ask questions seek counsel with your neighbor whether your question is constructive enough yes yes please please so that you don't you don't come out here and and waste our time 
But the gentleman was saying something that I consider to be important. Now, I think the biggest error in the prophetic is lack of spiritual growth to contend for accurate interpretation. The problem with the prophetic or visionary encounters usually, three of us can see the same thing in the spirit, but it does not mean the same for all three of us. Are we together? Now, that's the problem I have with books that say, if you see a chain, it means oppression. What if it's a chain watch that I saw? What if it's a, a necklace to mean an ornament of royalty? You can't just say, I saw a chain. It means I'm under attack. I, I remember a lady years ago who was pressing into God. And when she got to that dimension, she, she, a, another lady had a dream about her and saw her naked and came and met her and started lambasting her and said, you are walking in immorality. What kind of nonsense life is this? You are giving us an impression like you are serious with God. Now your secret has been revealed. And the lady was depressed and she came and met me. That, that nakedness was a message in the spirit that she was becoming intimate with the spirit. But it was wrongly interpreted. Three of us can see a finger in the spirit. For one, it means warning. Stop what you are doing. For another man, one, it means direction. Come up here. Are we together? For another, it means I am blessing the works of your hands. We all saw the same thing. So it is wrong. Remember in the interpretation of the dream of, of, of Joseph and the wine presser and baker, all of them saw three, three things. Three basket, three this. He interpreted for the first one and he was happy. Then the other one said, me too, I have my own. He said, in three days they will hang you. And this is established. And they hung him after three days. Are we together? So, stop going around with predefined prophetic interpretations. You only make certain prophetic interpretations predefined if the character of their operation has been established in the world. For instance, anywhere you see a dove is a representation of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Anywhere. It's a spiritual symbol that the Spirit of God has associated himself with. Except if you see a dove and you see it oscillating, that's, a, that's deception, for instance. Because according to the scriptures, the enemy can parade himself as an angel of light. Are we together now? So, it is true that there are certain default symbols that help us communicate with visionary encounters. But not just that you see... You can see a woman in the spirit. You can see yourself moving with a woman. And you may think that God is punishing you from lo or lost. A woman in the spirit is a gate. That woman you are seeing could be that you are entering a new season. Are you seeing now? But because you do not sustain that spiritual intelligence, you go around casting something you should be prophesying to come. And, and all of that. So I think... Um, for the gentleman, I think I've been able to help him. I, I hope that I got his question correctly. If I didn't, I'm, I'm so sorry. Praise God. Yes, my dear. Praise God. Permit me to say this that first. That it's an honor to finally meeting you after listening to your message for a very long time. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm very Thank happy you. I'm here tonight. You're my welcome. question is to Bawashi too. The first question is what do you do as a person when you're struggling with spiritual good? Today you are hope, tomorrow you are Spiritual you're growth. Uh, does Watch. it mean that um, it's like a graph that you'll be going zigzag, zigzag till you get to that final slope? Uh, or okay. is it that you question just... Question two. The second question is, you're talking about dream and vision. In my lodge, we had a case where someone said he had a dream, blah, 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 blah. And it's really caused a big advoct in my lodge. Look at the congregation. Okay. It's, it's really caused a big advoct in my lodge. I'm asking the question that... Does he had a dream about the lodge or something? About the sister, that the sister came to seduce him, blah, blah, blah. And everybody was now calling the sister a witch. That as, does it mean that all dreams come from God? Okay. When we see dreams, does it mean that everything is, we see, it is coming from God? Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you, my dear. Um, her first question was sometimes they should not go immediately so that they can remind me in case I've lost um, I'm interpreting them with my spirit so my mind is hardly here um, her first question was what <laughs> up up and down okay okay listen 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 please what does the bible say the path of the just is like a shining light that does what shines brighter 
and brighter unto the perfect day. Now, there is a difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding. I think I've, I've, cleared, I've cleared that. Alright? For as long as you are wearing this body, the limitations of carrying up mortality, right? The concept of immortality is a concept that is accessible. But immortality is not an impartation. Immortality is the resultant effect of accessing light from the spirit. Because the Bible says, as we behold him, we are changed. Now, the problem usually is that our lifetime and our level of regeneration is so slow that our lifetime will not be able to help us change that fast. That's why we die. Are we together now? But it is possible that a man can contend for that dimension. Enoch did it. Elijah did it. So we know that it's possible to live bodily, although in a glorified form, out of this earth. Moses didn't do it um, and all of that. But at least we have two witnesses, two evidences in the Bible that they were able to access that. So when you find yourself, see, and, and this is, her question is very instrumental to your spiritual health. If you are sick and you don't know, how many of you have seen people in the village who are sick, they don't even know? To them, they are healthy. You just test them and say, Mr. Man, you have malaria plus plus. And yet, the person is playing football. You not, now tell the person, go to the hospital. That's how many people are spiritually. And for me, your spiritual life is tested based on your passion for God. There are certain things that start happening in your life that you know there is danger. Number one, your prayer life. Your, when your prayer life is, is nose diving, don't ever pretend that it's a dimension of growth. You are backsliding immediately once your prayer life is going down don't let satan fool you and say you are just in a season where uh, god doesn't want you to say anything or this and that and that be very careful because it could be deception to destroy you your spiritual life number two your passion for the word number three your passion for the house of god number four i want to call it your your sense of morality is important if all of a sudden i sit down and I find out that I start lusting after you. Call me apostle, call me whatever. I'm lusting after you. I came for Koinonia, I saw you. Abel is preaching, Cain is there, disturbing his mind. What do you think I'll do? It will be stupid for me to wear suit again and come back. I will use the week to flog out that element of the flesh that is growing. Many of us ignore those promptings until it grows to a point where it backfires obviously. That's when we start crashing in. The moment, see, the Bible says, let sin have no place. Don't give the devil a foothold. The moment you find out that there is a place, there, is, there are certain things you are bending on your values. You don't pray for three days or four days. You feel all right. Very, very all right. You carry your Bible and there is no zeal to read. Sometimes it could be in the presence of God, you'll be able to find out whether it's spiritual fatigue or it is backsliding. Are we together? But ultimately, the difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding is that under spiritual fatigue, your passion is still there. It's just the zeal and the strength to press to that is not there. But under backsliding, your zeal and your passion dies. Are, are we together now? For the, our brother that saw a vision that a lady is seducing him, um, that's, that's wrong. You see, this, this is the problem we have. When we live in Christian communities, because people wake up with all kinds of things. I spoke to you about interpretation. This brother may be a sincere person. Maybe he's here. We are not creating fight. Are, you, are we together? You don't know whether he followed you for Koinonia. You said he's in your lodge. Now, the point is this: it is wrong. You see, prophecy and in the realm of and the realm of the spirit also depends on your mental renewal for correct interpretation. Are we together? I can guarantee you that this brother's spiritual paradigm fundamentally is faulty. For him to see an innocent lady and call her a witch to say, is he the only person in the lodge? You'll be surprised it's not even maybe the most handsome or something. So, um, it's, it's a wrong paradigm. Now, you point, do you know another thing? It is possible that I can go to bed and see Shalhoma chasing me maybe with a stick in a dream are we together now and all of a sudden i wake up and i say i saw shahoma chasing me 
and it's welfare that cooks for me. I put two and two together and I say my life is under, I'm in danger. I mean, and then I now dissolve koinonia welfare because they are trying to destroy Apostle Joshua Selman. Some of you, you have that paradigm. Now, it can happen. A possibility exists that such kinds of things happen. I mean, in the house of God, there are all kinds of things. But then I'm saying that your interpretation primarily should not be that because he saw a lady. If he does not understand, seek counsel. There are, there are spiritual puzzles that we put together. You must let scripture interpret your encounters. Are we together now? I mean, in the Bible, women seduce men. What was the progression of the seduction? Samson was seduced. Are we together? Who again was seduced in the Bible? Huh? Job was not seduced. Who? Joseph was seduced. Some of you are saying, Job, look at how your poor Bible, please, how about this is Koinonia, don't, we are Bible people. How, Job was never seduced. The only woman with him was his wife. Please, don't go and say that anywhere. It's very bad. Are, are we together now, my dear? So, that, that, that teaching, even if it was true, this is what I would have done. If I had a dream and you pursue me, or you are trying to sleep with me or something in a dream, right? Even if it was your face, it's wrong to get up and call you a witch. Do you know, because you don't know what spiritual challenges she's facing, you now get up and you now call her a witch. Three situations would help to interpret that. Number one, it could be that there is a spiritual operation around your life and your family that births seduction. It can be true. Are we together? That you as a person, you are not bad. But it's possible that you are being influenced by the spirit of lust. Or because of the background you are coming from. And so it will happen in the similitude of your face. Disturbing that person. Are we together now? And so you will feel bad. Number two, it can be the spirit of confusion. The devil masquerading to now cause confusion. Are we together? So he will now use your face. Just like you saw your father quarreling you. You saw your mother beating you. You just got up and said your mother is a witch. Anybody, whether my father or my mother. I'm, the, the woman is innocent. You find out that we keep calling people witches and wizards who have no business with witchcraft. However, 80% of them are being influenced by spirits that operate in the character of what they were accused of. You see that? So, um, whoever he called a witch, I can guarantee you, is not a witch. Please, she left her father's house to also come and do NYSC. She's not a witch. She may not be spiritually strong and all of that, but she's not a witch. It may be wrong. So, go and comfort her. The brother, what he saw, when you have encounters, you are not guaranteed to have interpretation for them. But one thing you can do is blast in tongues sufficiently until your spirit man gives you a note of peace. At that point, you know that whatever is the issue, whether calling it forth or driving it away, it has been settled. It is for that cause the Spirit of God makes intercession for us. I cannot tell you that every encounter I've had, I've had interpretation for. In fact, some of them may be years in the future. As I grow spiritually or I have other encounters that piece them up together, I now see the message. But in the interim, every time you wake up from an encounter, Praying in the spirit is the way forward. And you pray until there is that check in your spirit that whatever it is, it's been settled. You understand? So that's what you should do. God bless you and increase you. Eh? Okay, yes, straight sir. to the point. Um, we have, okay. Let's have one or two more people. Two more people. Please, if you are sure your question is really going to bless us, we have a little time and do, please and please don't ask anything here that will waste our time are we together the gentleman uh, if your questions will be fast i can listen to it and combine it that gentleman there's a lady in the background you sister the one waving your hands come um have we had anybody outside okay there's one person outside okay one usher come you're a worker we love you come okay so quickly good evening sir How are so you? a process whereby don't look at me. As you're saying it, look at the congregation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. In the presence whereby someone is suffering from the lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. Yes. Example, what is lust of the flesh? For Immorality. example, masturbation. Okay. Or lesbianism. 
and you are praying, praying in tongues, pray, you are in the presence of prayers, and you are still having the feelings. In the presence of praying, you, know, you are still struggling and struggling. You are trying to pray. The spirit is just trying and trying. So, sir, what do you What's do? the way forward? God bless you. Thank you. He's been very sincere. Look, let me tell you the truth. The goal of this question and answer session is to help us grow spiritually. There's nothing embarrassing about it. Praise God. There are people like that. In fact, I've seen people who are suffering from immorality or loss and they're on three days dry. On the third day, before they break with food, are we together now? The devil does some kind of things, positions, the same lady they used to sleep with and it happens again or internet pornography or whatever. We've seen these kinds of cases. So, um, do you know what deliverance is? Deliverance is not just coughing out things and rolling around and pushing chairs and bringing people here. Deliverance is the spiritual mechanism with which a man is separated from a spirit or an influence over his life. Are we together now? There are three dimensions or three levels that access Satan in a man's life. Number one is called covenants. Covenants. It is usually the strongest of the three. Number two is disobedience or ignorance. Number two is ignorance. Then number three is disobedience. Now, the danger of covenant and ties is that your personal salvation does not take away the covenant that is in a territory. Are we together now? That is the reason why someone can be born again. There are still corrupt people in Nigeria, but are you corrupt? No. Are we together now? Nigeria is termed a corrupt nation, yet there are righteous people who are true. Are we together now? The earth is the Lord, yet they are still bombing children and disturbing people. So, there are covenants. A covenant is a legal agreement between spirit entities and human beings or fellow human beings. Right? That either opens up access for good or of evil. Covenants have consequences. Right? They can, they, can, they can transcend generations. So this is very important. That's why you find out that the classic sign of covenants is that there must be a pattern to it. The moment there is a covenant involved in any process, there is a pattern. If these three guys are brothers and you find out that Michael is very rich, Kenny is very rich, Promise is very rich, you see that pattern, there is a covenant that grant that access promise very poor kenny very poor michael struggling there is also a pattern so patterns are usually communications that the access point for the realm of the spirit in that situation is a covenant so you find out that a father is an arm robber when he stole his son did not know many years later the son will also come and steal have you seen people like that the same pattern that happened to their parents repeats themselves because the patterns are a spiritual formula. There is an enchantment like a spell that makes it happen. I know a lady who, who uh, I think um, um, she got pregnant. And the person who got her pregnant, I think was a man of God. Same thing happened to her mother. Same thing happened to her grandmother. One reverend in their village got the grandmother pregnant. Many years later, one, one evangelist or something got the mother pregnant. And then now... One brother in a fellowship gets the lady pregnant. Now, that brother does not know the reverend that got uh, uh, um, grandma pregnant that time when she was young. But then, the truth remains that there is a pattern. Are, are we together? Are you getting it now? And I know that sometimes many of us are preached into believing they don't exist. And we try to explain them away. But the truth is, it's there. It can be dealt with. Potentially, the birth of Jesus gives us access to victory in this thing but there is the experience of establishing that victory are we together number two is ignorance 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 grants access to demon spirits they manipulate on the ignorance of men and open them up to certain tragic manifestations then number three is disobedience you know it but your capacity to walk thereof in that obedience it's not there. So these are the three access points. So if you find out that you are praying, praying and fasting about the issue of lust or immorality or any entanglement and it's repeating itself, you need help. That's the reason why God puts 
um, gifts to the body to be able to help, right? Remember our teaching for this course, many are weak, many are sick, and many do sleep. God has elected certain people in the body of Christ and created platforms that can be able to help people deal with these things. That's why we organize miracle services. That's why we organize um, um, all kinds of meetings. That's why when we come to God's presence like this, we take our time to soak in the glory so that the presence and the power of God can come and then address some of these things. So for that brother, you may need help. Seek help. Look for an anointed man of God, not just a counselor. Somebody with an anointing that has been demonstrated to produce results and it can help you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. My name is Luke. My name is Luke. It's talking about the presence of God. Okay. I heard of your message you preach about doers of the world. Okay. And you mentioned, I forgot the man name, but you say pursue of the presence. When we pursue, how do one pursue the presence of God? And how do we abide in that presence of God? Like in Psalm 91 verse 1, when it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Sometimes I may get interpretation of that verse, but sometimes the interpretation does not suit me. So I'm asking, that how do one, what, do, what are the criteria for one to dwell in the presence of God and remain constant in the presence of God? Okay. There are parameters. Number one, you must consistently create an atmosphere. You see, I preached a message years ago called lo the law of atmosphere. Everything thrives based on the atmosphere created. The presence of God requires an atmosphere. The presence of God is invoked, just like you invoke spirits. There is an atmosphere that allows the presence of God to be made manifest. Are we together now? Worship is one key that opens up the presence of God. Your passion your love towards God. In other words, you're prioritizing him. Making him your one and only and ultimate is one way to get the presence of God. Obedience in scripture. He that keepeth my commands, John um, um, 16, 21, I think I'm right. Or 14, 21. He that keepeth my commands, he it is that loves me. And I will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him. So, the love of God is very, very important. Yes, my dear. Praise God. I'm precious, Moses. Um, I want to ask, uh, um, there's this friend of mine that I was preaching to, and um, she was telling me that there's no heaven, that we are going to stay here. There's no there's, heaven? Yes, and there's no hell. Uh, okay. So, now, we're getting into I've, denominational. And, okay. Um, she was not, I was not telling her there is the no story heaven. of uh, Lazarus and the rich man. I now asked her that, okay, where did Lazarus went to and where was the rich man? Then she asked me to open to Revelation 21 verse 1. And after much argument, she was now asking me that. In Revelation 21, she said, and I saw a new heaven a coming new down ahead. And you know, she was now asking me that, okay, where is that new heaven and the new earth? And I didn't know what to really tell just kept quiet i was confused in that aspect god bless you um i don't know if it's the millennial reign of christ or i understand i don't really you see we labor day and night uh contributing our quota to help believers become matured are we together you make people become matured by giving them understanding now before i answer I don't mean in any way. I know that there are different denominations, different Christian sects with their understandings about heaven and all of that. And um, I'm not giving you a denominational opinion. Are we together now? There are many instances in scripture that lets us know that there is heaven. Are we together now? Very, very important. I, I think that um, it doesn't make sense to begin to make all those arguments. Genesis 1 verse 1. The very first verse in the Bible. In the beginning, God created what? And the earth. Now, I think that alone answers. First verse, first chapter in the whole Bible. In the beginning, God created. So, don't say where is it. Created, God created the heavens. And notice he never said the heaven. Heavens. Different planes. Paul himself gave us an example he said he was caught up to the third heaven that means there are other dimensions the psalmist said the heaven of heavens 
belongs to the Lord. So we know that there are different planes, but there is heaven. Hallelujah. Are we together now? The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Not just the sky. Are we together now? Acts chapter 1, when Jesus was about to be taken, when he lifted to heaven, two angels appeared and told the people, men and brethren, why look ye? You know, this and that and that. He said, this same Jesus. Is it not there? Acts chapter 1. Let's use it to answer. At least let's use the words of Jesus. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus is going to heaven now. And he's speaking to us. Or the angels are responding. Acts chapter 1. I, I don't want to quote it wrongly. Verse, verse 10. Verse 10. I know that when you read from verse 9. Let's start from verse 9. It gives us an impression like he just vanished. He did not just vanish. A cloud received him. A cloud received him. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10, please, quickly. And while they looked steadfastly towards where? Heaven. As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Verse, verse 11. Which he also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into where? Into where? So we know that heaven is the habitation. The heaven of heavens is where Jesus himself lives. There is a place, a spiritual location called heaven. It says, shall also come in like manner as ye have seen him go into where? Heaven. Are we together? So that issue of saying um, there is no heaven is not true. Please, the Bible does not negate that. The fact that there is heaven. The Bible clearly tells us in many instances, Old and New Testament, that there is heaven. Jesus himself, I want to give you the ultimate proof now. Jesus himself made us to know that there is heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, when he was teaching us how to pray, he said, our father... Who art where? He didn't say our father who art around. Our father who art in an exact location, heaven. From that point, we hallow your name. Your kingdom come. So please, let's rest this issue once and for all. There is a real place called heaven. And, and um, there are people there right now. Are we together? And we hope that one day we'll join them. Now, what we need to explain is the fact that the Bible says the old heaven and the old earth will be rolled away like a curtain and then a new heaven and a new earth will come it is true that that very habitation of god will eventually be transported back to this realm but it won't be in the similitude of these three dimensions so it's not like we're going to have another three-dimensional realm no there will be another atmosphere that comes to occupy this space this is the sovereignty of god this is part of the mysteries of the kingdom where this old heaven and old earth will be rolled away to frankly speaking we don't know the bible does not reveal that uh, this is part of the information that is contained in the age to come are we together now that's why there are ages to come that carry certain informations that are important for the saints so there is heaven my dear and every time you preach to people and they argue with you don't turn your evangelism into debate politely decline you may look foolish don't say no i can't let this go like this let it go like that so that god will be glorified yes my dear praise the lord my name is christiana Kadure. thank you my question is sir like somebody prophesied to you you're going to marry a man of god and you have been waiting <laughs> okay many ladies are happy Okay, let, let's get the question, please. And Someone prophesied to you. And nobody. And said you will marry a pastor. Yes. And you have been waiting. And the person has been waiting because one miracle service, I saw you, sir, you prophesied to one lady that she's going to marry a pastor. And one day again, I'm listening to one man of God. He was saying, anybody that prophesied, if he's a man of God, that the thing did not happen, continue waiting. Even when you die waiting, continue waiting. So, <laughs> I'm asking that. When somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a pastor, and the pastor is not coming, you continue waiting. What okay. to do? That's a very good question, I think. 
we can use it it's not just prophesying about marriage it could be about anything praise the lord now um i i understand what she's saying and she's communicating probably the pain of a lot of people because over time women of god have spoken to people and there are times that for others the prophecy have even come with precise detail you are going to marry a man called uh, ebenezer he's in media department the day you will see him is wearing a white cloth dark trouser he's holding a camera if he snaps you just know now come ebenezer now ebenezer come now ebenezer now ebenezer you now come for koinonia and ebenezer is just snapping around and focuses on you and your heart is beating it's true ebenezer snaps you and goes to marry somebody else are we together now and now you are waiting and you are frustrated now there are three things here i want to explain i know we have all laughed but let's listen closely now the bible says that even the ministration of the gifts must be done according to the measure of grace are we together two of us can be prophets but the grace the access to authority and strength the spiritual ranking that authorizes us in the dispensing is like you have two doctors one is just doing his housemanship another one is doing another one is a consultant they are all called doctors but are they the same they are not the same at all are we together now this is how it is spiritually so when we when there is the ministration of the word notice sometimes when you see me wanting to talk to people i call people out by the spirit and i just keep quiet because of what the lord is communicating to me sometimes it's like a feedback mechanism i'm checking in my spirit to make sure that this is not an interplay of the flesh and to also make sure if god wants me to reveal it to them sometimes you see me and i talk to people i take away the mic because the information is very sensitive and may is something that can be embarrassing are we together now but let me tell you sincerely let me tell you this sincerely one thing i know about marriage and we have discussed that make reference to my message um challenging discussions on late marriage i think we touched that area where the issue of god said overrides the word of god the bible tells us hebrews chapter one god who in sundry times and diverse manners speak to us through the prophets has in this last day spoken to us through his son which he has appointed to be heir over all things and we know that that son is the living logos the word of god and so whether it is joshua selman i'm not telling you to doubt the word by the grace of god we press into the word of god to make sure that we bring accurate words and there is a track record you can follow up the things that have been prophesied over people some of them have come to pass some of them are already on the way praise the lord now um no matter what it is if a man of god gives you a prophetic word and after a season you do not for instance let's use marriage i prophesy to this lady now and i tell her a pastor is coming and michael comes to her and let's assume michael is just a businessman you know that the natural tendency is for her to drive him away and say please you are not a pastor um he may be a pastor when he marries her god didn't lie are we together but sometimes it can also be that there is need for a check in fact sincerely speaking let me tell you it is very it is very praiseworthy to go back to god again we have seen instances in the bible where god spoke and under certain circumstances he had to speak new things again are we together an example is isaiah 38 when he spoke to isaiah to speak to hezekiah remember that scripture he came and told him hezekiah put your house in order you will not recover from this sickness you are going to die are we bible students so when i hezekiah turned his face to the wall and invoked the mercy of god god sent isaiah again are we together to go back so there is a possibility it's not a doctrine but through scripture we see that there is a possibility um the alignment of man 
can make God say new things. I'll give you an instance. If this lady is your wife, I wait to um, example, example. If this lady is your wife, I'm not showing you your wife. If this lady is your wife, of, of course, let me just put a, a little word of blessing. We are proud of our ladies. And if I say it and God is, 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 is directing you there, there's nothing wrong. Ladies, you should give me a happy meal tomorrow. <laughs> are we together? But now this is the example. If this is your wife, truly, truly, and she says, I'm not doing, do you think God is going to yoke you and tell you you will not marry any, anybody again because of her carelessness and disobedience? Are we together now? God will not put you to ransom. The same way if God calls you into ministry and you say no, will he force you? Will he kill you? The same way he, he tells you that you should surrender all to him. When you refuse, he will not force you. There's hellfire already to settle that issue. So he will not force you. Please, I want us to understand that the plans of God can change. It's his purposes that are eternal. This is a revelation that will deliver many of us right now. The plans of God can change. God planned that you fly Ari to Lagos. And something happens. God will tell you to enter if it's in a cheap transport. The plans have changed. But the destination is still Lagos. But when you sit down and say it must be Arik or it must be flight. Are we together now? In scripture again and again. For instance, do you know it was never God's desire for men to have earthly kings rule over them? When you read in the Bible, it was his desire that he remains their king. But the people out of anger and rebellion, they say give us a king. And God had to make prophet Samuel to go and anoint Saul, the son of Kish, to become a king. Are we together now? Yes. It was never even God's desire. Listen. It was never God's desire for David, for the tribe of David, to be the lineage with which Jesus will come. It was supposed to be Saul. Are we together? But Saul made a costly mistake that costed him that opportunity. Remember when he went and he was off. Um, giving the offering by himself they asked him to wait for the coming of the prophet but he could not wait because the people were murmuring and being a king he was not a priest are we together because in ancient times there were kings priests and prophets they operated in different dimensions occasionally the priests were also the prophets like we have in the case of samuel he was both a priest and a prophet are we together now and so in that incident um, Saul now start he made sacrifices and while he finished Samuel just came and Samuel told him you have done foolishly he said if you had waited for me to come and offer the sacrifice God would have established your throne forever so it would not be the lion of the tribe of or, or the, the root of David it would now be the root of Saul Again, we see that the first person God called in the Bible was not Abraham. The first person God called in the Bible was his father, Terah. Terah was tired and he said, I'm not doing. And then God looked for Abraham. Are we together now? So that's very, very important. I think that um, we need to understand this. My, my dear, if, even if it's me that prophesied to you and you are tired, come and meet me. Come for counseling. And say, let's, let's hear God. Let's pray about this issue again. Especially where there is a God-fearing, very serious and responsible brother who is ready to marry. And is coming around you. You are hanging the person while waiting for the pastor to see if the pastor will come or not. Don't dilly-dial. Find the man of God. If the person who prophesied to you is still within reach, find him. If you discern pride and arrogance in him that he's embarrassed to recheck whether his hearing was correct, go and look for another man of God to speak to you. Are we together now? I know there's a lady who came one time, I think from Port Harcourt, coming to confirm because a man of God described somebody, a fair person, and she had been waiting. And there was somebody who really loved God. When she came, I prayed for her and I said, I, I wish you a happy married life. And they are married now, happily married to the glory of God. She would have been waiting forever for, for a, a yellow person to appear. So, praise the Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, all these questions we have attempted, 
reveal three things. Number one, it is costly to be ignorant over spiritual things. Are we together? It is costly. Just a little question and answer session, but it has exposed us to a lot of things. It is costly. I trust that with this little question and answer session, it has activated our appetite for more of God. You see, if you do not understand scripture, you will be deceived in many ways. You notice that every question I attempt to answer, I show you a scripture to support it because you cannot afford to answer questions with opinions and you will not know God's opinion if you don't study. Study. Study to show yourself, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word. Praise the Lord. Psalms 82 from verse 5 says, They know not, neither will they understand. He said they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course. So it is important for us to be good students of the word. Not religiously studying it, but studying it with everything that we have. Hallelujah. Number two, corporate fellowship is very important. It's part of the principles and the requirement for your spiritual growth. You can see that a platform like this has afforded us an opportunity to know more and to learn a few things to strengthen our spiritual life. Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that comes from the head of Aaron, right? Down to his bird and to his cat and all of that. He said, dear, God had commanded the blessing. So it's very important. Corporate fellowship is important for our spiritual strengthening. Hallelujah. And then number three, ultimately, it reveals to us the necessity of the person of the Holy Spirit. Worship team sang the song beautifully. We're going to sing that song again. And, and then we'll sing that song that came. I can't even remember what we sang, but try to remember it, worship team. We'll sing those two songs again very beautifully. The Holy Spirit. This place is called Koinonia. It's our intimacy with him and our partnership with him that affords us the opportunity to access light and access his wisdom. The Bible says, ride prosperously because of truth. Right? You will only prevail by the truth you know, not the truth that is available. The truth you know. It can be available, but if you do not know it, you will still die. There are still people going to hell, whereas the price for our sin has been paid for. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Um, just a few minutes and we'll be done. We are going to pray and ask the Lord very passionately, very passionately, to open up our spirits. To open up our spirits. Very, very important. While seated, just pray. We're going to stand up, but then I want us to pray while seated and talk to the Lord. Some of us have seen this situation has revealed to some of us how clueless we are over spiritual things. If you were to be asked some of these questions, many of us see that this is like a, a test. Those outside, make sure you are praying at the back there outside at the window make sure you are participating in the prayer the lord is with you right where you are make sure you are praying and say lord please deliver me from spiritual ignorance deliver me from ignorance grant me access to the word grant me access to the word deliver me from spiritual ignorance Lord, I want to be furnished, grounded in the truth. The Bible says that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and, and evangelists and pastors and teachers. He says for the equipping of the saints. The equipping of the saints. That they the saints now equipped will do the work of the ministry. To the end that we all will come into the fullness of the the, the measure of the stature of Christ. Not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Lift your voice and pray. And say, Lord, in this time and age, in these end times, where there is a lot of error, there is a lot of confusion, I pray that I be delivered from spiritual ignorance. Lift your voice and pray. 
Deliver me, O God, from ignorance. Open my eyes to access light in the spirit. Deliver me, O God, from spiritual ignorance. Pray. Make sure you are praying. Deliver me, O God, from spiritual ignorance. It's dangerous in these days not to lack the knowledge that you need. Number two, Lord, align my spirit in a way that I'll begin to touch realities in the realm of the spirit. Lift your voice and pray. Let there be a programming in my spirit. Let there be an alignment in my spirit, man. Have your way. I'm tired of wrong interpretation. I'm tired of interpreting spiritual realities in a wrong way. I'm tired of reading my Bible and not accessing the light and the power that I need. Pray. Align my spirit. I cry for an alignment upon my spirit, man. Have your way. Have your way. please rise as we pray this very prayer point is important oh god if ever you need a vessel find one in me lift your voice and pray use me oh god many of us have stopped praying that prayer use me for your glory lift your voice and pray lord use me use me use me i may not be a man of god but make me a mighty vessel in your hand Oh yes, have your way in my life. Have your way in my life. Use me for your glory. As an agent of deliverance. As an agent of transformation. As an agent of healings. Miracles, signs, wonders. Use me in the prophetic, oh God. Use me in the apostolic, oh God. Use me in the healing ministry. Take your place, take your place, take your place. Hey. Holy God, take your place, take your place, take your place. Holy Oh, 
Oh, use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. Have your way. Have your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like us to pray. Any gift of the spirit, any dimension that once worked in you, but for some reason has stopped working, I like you to pray and say, Lord, revive her. Let there be a restoration. Lift your voice and pray. I used to have dreams, but the dreams have disappeared. Lord, let it come back. I used to have encounters. I used to have ministration of angels. Oh God, my prophetic dimension was sharper than this. Something has happened. Lift your voice and pray. Restoration, oh God. Restoration, oh God. Restoration, oh God. Restoration, oh God. Restoration of the gifts of the Spirit. Restoration of the wisdom of the Spirit. Restoration of passion. Passion for God. Restoration of passion. Restoration of hunger. Spiritual seriousness. Hunger. For Bible studies. Hunger. For prayer. Hunger. For fasting. Hunger. For the house of God. Hunger to see his kingdom come. Take your place. Take your place. Pray it from your heart. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Take your place. Hallelujah. Listen. Pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere. Pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere. Don't allow the things of the flesh pollute your spiritual atmosphere. It will destroy you, I tell you. Some of us is friends. I'm not teaching you to hate people. The character of the Christ is love. But you cannot give everybody access to pollute your environment with everything. No. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, please don't say it does not matter. The true spirit of holiness, let me tell you the truth. The true spirit of holiness is the atmosphere that brings the presence of God. The true spirit of holiness don't trivialize it. The true spirit of holiness is what creates the atmosphere of the spirit. Because he's called Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. There is a beauty that holiness brings. It's called the beauty of holiness. Culture your atmosphere. Take God seriously. No one leg in, one leg out and you are just playing around. Don't be careless with your life. Hallelujah. I just sense a need that we should make this prayer again a final point. Because like Samson, there are people who have lost touch with certain virtues. You receive certain things, maybe in a meeting or in koinonia or somewhere or an impartation. A man of God laid hands on you and activated spiritual possibilities. But some of us, you did not know how to fan it to flame. There are some of us here the level of the prophetic you should be walking in now, if you were consistent with God, you would have been walking in notable levels, but you are still at that level. There are some of us, the level of the teaching grace, if you were only serious with the word, you read your Bible once in a month, but look what you are doing. Imagine if you read it every day. Hallelujah. He said, cast me not away from your presence. Take not your spirit from me. We need that restoration. And we're going to pray. Make this prayer personal. Listen. 
you know where you are slacking in the spirit don't feel condemned but you must sustain grace to catch up some of us is our prayer life there's really nothing left there some of us is our word life you are a prayer machine but your word content is low so there is wrong interpretation to your spiritual things hallelujah lift your voice and pray lord a restoration mention the area you want him to restore you lord i need a restoration of your presence i used to carry heavy weights of your presence everyone who came around me felt that presence but for some reason oh god i've lost it pray restoration I pray for you fire is going to come on a lot of people just in one minute there will be activations and impartations lift your hands father in the name of Jesus Christ I pray there are a number of people in this place that the fire must be restored through apostolic fire through prophetic fire at the count of three listen I want you to shout that name Jesus as you shout that name for many of you from tonight you will go back and the dreams will be restored for many of you right away the healing anointing comes lift your voice father i pray that in the next one minute let there be a mighty restoration and an impartation as your people shout that name i pray that your glory will fall on them right now one two three second Receive it right now, right now, right now, right now. Receive it. My goodness, help them. That impartation, that impartation. Receive it right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Receive it, receive it. Dreams, dreams, dreams. The Lord is activating dreams. Prophetic dreams. Symbolic dreams. restoration of healing power the healing anointing the healing anointing the healing anointing hallelujah the healing anointing is falling i don't know why god is talking to me about healing the healing anointing receive it right now lord where are they where are they where are they take it take it now 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 the healing virtue I release it from the spirit power to heal power to heal power to heal in the name of the Lord Jesus power to heal power to heal in the name of Jesus power to heal in the name of Jesus yeah. 
I hear my spirit, the gift of utterance. Utterance. Lord, where are those people? Like fire will come upon you. Some of you on your mouth, literally. Utterance. Utterance. I impart it right now. Right now. Right now. Utterance. Inside and outside. Fire is falling. Mantles of utterance. Shake it. of God. challenges i want you to know there is a spirit behind that challenge every challenge in any man's life is a sign that there are demon spirits standing that's not a sign that you don't have faith it's a sign that you are in the world the bible says the whole world lies in wickedness hallelujah do you believe what i'm teaching you True freedom then does not just become jumping around and shouting, I am free. When we can obviously see that there is a, a spirit influencing you. How many angry pastors do you know? They love God, they jump around, but you do something, they can wind their hand and slap you because, you see, you can claim you are a man of God. You can claim you are whatever, but it does not stop those spirits from influencing you. Listen. The influence of spirit over a man's life is a contention. It takes light and revelation and the anointing for you to stand in a position where the Holy Spirit is the only spirit that is authorized to find expression in your human spirit and ultimately through your body. But there are many people under the influence of many spirits and they will not agree. Their bodies are helplessly executing masturbation. Yet they love God. Their bodies are helplessly executing pornography. Their bodies are helplessly executing all kinds of things. Then we try to create messages to say it doesn't matter. Yo, it matters. Don't let anyone fool you. It does. It does matter. Then you lie down in the night to sleep. And here comes a gentleman or a gentle lady sleeps with you some of you stand up with bedwetting you stand up with every experience and you just pretend that nothing happened i i pretend i didn't see anything why are you deceiving ah nothing happened i'm okay and you get up and everybody who would have helped you in the day no longer is able to help you and you come back and say no 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 i, I think there's something i'm not claiming look calm down and let the power of god set you free or tell lies and join the crowd of liars with all kinds of struggles in the secret place who will not open up their hearts for true liberty the bible says now the lord is that spirit he said and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty i was preaching i was in ministry yet demons were oppressing me shamelessly my own was so bad i would see them physically lie down to sleep and here they come marching gallantly into my room and oppress me they could oppress me so much i can hear people talking in the physical right a lady gets up and has an issue of blood one month two months three months losing blood losing your life no forget about the physical losing of the blood there is a spirit 
that losing of the blood is, is a type of the manifestation of a spirit somewhere. You get up a very healthy lady and all of a sudden you find out that there's lump in your breast and you just laugh and say it happens um, when you eat in, in restaurants too much. When you eat fried food, lump will come out. Look at, look at the explanation that you are convinced and, and the spirits are saying, I like this generation. I like the way science is hiding us from them. A man goes to bed healthy and wakes up in the morning and one leg cannot lift again. I think the protocol department were there when one small boy did something during counseling. I think the last time we had counseling. One woman that we prayed for during one of the miracle services. So they came for counseling. When they came for counseling, I looked at the boy. The mother was so slim. And they were saying that the boy was in occult and all of that. And I looked at the boy. And I said, are you in occult? The boy said, yes. I said, who tied your mother? He said, me. I said, why now? He said, they asked him to do it. I said, go on, loser. Who was there? You were there, Lawrence. I mean, this guy saw wonders that will not end. The boy just went. Sat down on the ground. Carried mama's legs. And started doing it like this. Then later he would say, remain small. He's about to finish. When the boy finished, he got up. Now, you would have, you would have seen that and said, this small boy... But this boy is only a slave to a spirit. When a child of five years old will not let the mother rest, that coconut head is not the physical head. There is a, there is a spirit that makes that head strong and stubborn. Are we together now? Slapping the child in anger is only wasting your time. There is a spirit that can influence your life and bad luck follows you you become a magnet you never magnetize anything good if guy is to jam people you are the one it will jam if police is to gather some people as suspects it's just when they are catching people you just come in they say follow them you say no 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 i attend koinonia they say go ahead, explain in the police station now you may laugh about it you may laugh about it every bad thing happens to you everyone laughs in the class but the lecturer will ask you to stand up and say why did you laugh as if you are the only person and you were at the back listen that lecturer himself may be a victim to a spirit is joining your heads together and so by coming to his office you now say you I, I don't you smile what is your name now you are entered another level of, of trouble humans victims to spirits that's what is happening in the earth i feel very sad when i see people they get up and they get up in the morning and they do not know listen they do not know that your body is only an instrument of execution there is a spirit that is driving you when you see favor coming to a man no there is a spirit that makes it happen there is an operation. There is an anointing. Are you getting me now? You can just be sitting down. And then God will speak to you. Carry 10,000 naira. And give a marker. Why didn't God say somebody should give to you? There is something. It's not just that, okay, God has spit. No, 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 no. If you understand this, you will know how easy it is to walk in victory. You don't focus on this physical body you focus on what spirit and what atmosphere influences it because that's what determines the possibilities there are people who almost never pay for anything when you are going to buy something that's when somebody comes and says do you know i was thinking about you this morning and you tell the person i'm not surprised because the activity of the holy spirit manifesting as different things favor the blessing whatever it is orchestrate events together for you are you getting what i'm saying now as a pastor the day the anointing is strong upon your life that's the day everybody who can help you will not come for the program you stand and preach your life out and everybody say kai we have seen what what god is doing through you and uh, as a family we really appreciate uh, by god's grace next convention will not forget you i assure you 
and you stand up and go but someone else the day he's coming somebody is about to travel and mysteriously his car may spoil and you say let me attend this program and he comes and says god has been asking me to sow into a man this preacher is that man you think it just happens the only thing that grows in a farm without being planted is called what everything of worth is planted are you getting what i'm saying favor does not just come a ministry does not just grow anointing doesn't just come revelation doesn't just come honor doesn't just come a man doesn't just become sick a man doesn't just become healed was it not in your bible listen that the trouble around daniel's life was the spirit of the medis and the persians is that not true it was happening physically through human beings but it was a spirit because it was under the influence of the 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 medis and the persians it was a spirit that made men to serve idols and now a man came called daniel and he was praying and his prayer was judging those spirits and so they could not influence the king and he made the king like daniel are you getting me now and the king's liking daniel made him to subscribe to the god of daniel and those spirits said no we have to find a way of bringing enmity between the king and daniel so one day you get up and somebody comes you you thought a neighbor just entered your house and jam your head you and your destiny helper and left it's not just that a neighbor came a spirit visited your compound using human vessels jammed the head of two people and left all of you together are you getting what i'm saying now a husband and a wife lovely people romeo and juliet the marriage is going well all of a sudden a spirit lands in that house and then something happens a woman who has been minding her business all of a sudden she looks at a text and doesn't see it properly and she thinks that she saw i love you to another woman she carries it and lands the phone on the man's head only to find out that it was maybe to their daughter or a spiritual daughter or something and now enmity starts and a lot of people sit down and say you see uh, just love yourself just manage like that wait and see the part two of that movie the holy spirit i mean the, the demon spirit will come again into the house something will happen that demon spirit will start making that man to fail in his job are you getting the point now he will return back home with the anger of his job that spirit the same spirit will start making the woman angry and be impatient so her impatience is jamming with his failure in the office what does it produce divorce that's the name at the end of it the apostle and the prophet that should rise from that family no longer has parents and the boy who would have loved church who would have been faithful in church is now forced to follow bad gangs you just thought it was a physical acting the body without a spirit is dead every time you see things around your life not working the way god orchestrated don't sit down and discuss get into the place of prayer immediately there is war happening in the heavenlies there is a clash of spirits they are claiming your body listen do you know that when moses died watch this when michael came to carry the body of moses he found satan too satan wanted to use the body of moses enter it and resurrect as moses are you getting the point now resurrect as moses and start bringing error to people and he needed the body desperately and michael said no 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 i'm not going to drag with you the lord rebuke you how many people saw your mother in a dream a spirit carried the face of your innocent mother landed it in the dream of her enemy and she got up and said i knew it i knew it Joshua Selman's mother is a witch. This one, I saw it. The woman came with a knife. How many of our mothers and fathers have been called witches and wizards? 
and and this is what many prophets see and because they do not have discernment are you getting the point now they now say i saw who some this and that and that and that is it not in your bible when a a, a diviner invokes the supposed spirit of samuel to prophesy I refuse any other spirit from influencing my life I, I, I don't have time for that I cannot be a victim for the, the failure that is orchestrated look at Job one more scripture to prove this to you Job a man who loved God and eschewed evil but the Bible says a meeting happened between spirits in the heavens Job was not there all. a man just gets up in the morning and they have concluded a meeting about you your children are on the way thunder strikes them you just finished furnishing your house thunder strikes it your cattle die mysteriously notice all the deaths that happened there was one one people left to come and testify is that a testimony job i'm the only one who is alive this is what happened and then the meeting was held again and he said let's touch his body ah. So a meeting can happen. Watch this. Let's destroy this family. And they conclude it. You snore your way through the morning. Wake up. And that's the last time you know peace in a long time. You are a victim. Your body is only a victim. Tonight, this is the, this is the theme of this miracle service. Let me tell you. When these spirits clear out of the way, you will be shocked to see the doors that will open for you. All of a sudden, you who nobody would call you, you will receive a call. The last time you spoke with that person was five years. He did just call you. The Holy Ghost made it happen because there was a spirit that was stopping that call. Every time they want to think about you, a distraction happens and you remain in that suffering. And when you come to us, men of God, we say, it's okay. Don't worry things will change one day go better that, 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 no, no 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 that's why i told you you must insist tonight you must insist you are mighty on your throne two things there are three things that give demon spirits access to people and families i want you to pay attention to what i'm saying three things number one covenants covenants covenant you reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountains of the deep. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. America as a nation. Listen, a man can wear the inner wears of a woman, watch this, and be moving on the street. And that man returns back and blessings keep following him. A very stupid man, but good things are happening in his life. Let me tell you why. It's because of the covenant of the fathers. There were people who signed an agreement and said, Lord, we give this nation to you. Anyone who comes under the umbrella of this nation is authorized to walk in that blessing. And so, a woman, a man can go for plastic surgery to become a woman and yet come out alive. In Nigeria, you try to even just operate somebody's ear and he would die. Was it the knife that killed him? Are the doctors so daft? Let me tell you what our forefathers left with us. Ready? This is what they left. They went to mountains, valleys, regions. Listen. And all kinds of ancestry. We can fake it and pretend. Listen. I'm a new creation person. I've read the Pauline epistles. Are you getting what I'm saying? I understand the grace of God and the new creation realities very well. But I know God and I understand his ways. Are you following me now? 
please come two people very quickly so that i need to no no sit down pastor for me I promise you can come come stand here stand here watch this in my example this guy is a thief this guy is a wrong occupant watch this if this is my handkerchief and ken comes to quickly steal it the moment he hears this my footsteps what will he do he will run away because he's a what thief but if somebody comes and meets promise and say promise give me 10 naira i will give you this handkerchief and promise gives him 10 naira and he gave him the handkerchief is there a contract there is there a covenant there if he sees me coming will he refuse because you see the realm of the spirit is a legal realm are you getting what i'm saying now so our forefathers went to idols and they said protect our wives make the plants bring crops for us in response we will hold festivals every time in response we will donate children to you in response they, it was not their fault they did it because christianity had not come to nigeria now watch this when samuel ajayi crowder and many other christians came they brought the gospel of salvation not the mysteries of the kingdom are you getting me they brought the gospel and we salute them but that was not enough the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom that would bring liberty was not taught so even they themselves died i traveled to we were in gombe one time gombe state and we're going to Yerima's village to go and greet his family and on our way there there was a rock like a cap and they were telling us a story there that the people used to live there that that rock used to open physically there was an invocation that would be made on it and it would open and people would enter inside the rock and hide during times of war and this is what they said the last person to enter you are the one that is donated to that rock the last person to come out you are also donated to the rock are we together now and that rock has been faithful has been what the same way our forefathers had bumper harvest even where there was no rain mysteriously the crops grew these spirits kept their part of the contract all of a sudden some missionaries just found themselves into the village and they said we brought good news and they died in three days the spirit killed them immediately and said you are joking good news of what and then a few people received it and then when they received it they convinced themselves that because they are born again the territory was now changed i watched a documentary brothers and sisters in fiji island fiji island is an island small island but they love god now something happened there were missionaries who came to that place and they so beat the missionaries and oppressed them before the missionaries died they cursed the land they cursed the land and the people and they died and the people thought it did not matter one by one the fish in the river disappeared mysteriously when hunger hit the people from the government down they said something is wrong and god began to reveal to the church around there that look there are there are apostolic activities that must happen in this land if the territory must be cleansed this is what they did they began to pray and then supernaturally they found the grandchildren of the missionaries listen to me they brought the grandchildren of the missionaries to the city they loved them and the children blessed the land and say we release you from the cause of our fathers it's, it's a documentary in less than one week they saw fish crops started growing fiji island changed at once there are so many families that are seated part of the terms of the contract is that if you don't bow down to that idol you will never build a house you will never marry contract sealed now you came that you are born again and you are moving around 35 37 no marriage the other one too is coming when you meet pastors they say no problem are you not born again just believe marriage is going the ones that get married no children mysteriously 
you are seeing the same patterns happen because covenants are powerful that was the very same principle jesus used to redeem man covenants covenants are you getting what i'm saying now covenants are powerful until they are broken the spirits the custodian of those covenants are authorized to still begin to execute the terms on the of the covenants even on the victims please believe what i'm saying i prayed for too many people i've ministered to too many people i'm not telling you stories i'm telling you what i was free from number two ignorance ignorance authorizes demon spirits to buffet people psalm 82 verse 5 bless you guys thank you they know not neither will they understand they crop in darkness confusion ignorance and as a result the earth is out of course but have i not said verse six year god and all of you are children of the most high he said but you shall die like men men and fall like one of these princes the bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge ignorance ignorance of the mysteries of the kingdom ignorance of the principles of the kingdom ignorance of the keys to true liberty in the spirit number three disobedience personal disobedience deuteronomy when you read i think chapter 28 or so it shall come to pass it says thou shalt diligently hearken to these things to do and observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above all nations and the blessing shall come upon you and overtake you is tied to your obedience the bible says having the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is perfected when it is complete disobedience authorizes the devil to buffet our lives don't let anybody lie to you that when you disobey god nothing happens no it's not about god doing it it's about the laws in the spirit they will not change they didn't start with the old testament those laws predate our dispensation are we together now so tonight i want you to look at your life very carefully especially for those of us who have come have you not seen traces of the influence of darkness in one area or the other that does not mean you are not born again that does not mean you are not serious with god but it's time tonight on behalf of you and your family members to rise up and say no way i come by the blood i come to challenge these things there are many of us who have never received a testimony of any good thing that anybody has done in your life somebody buys a recharge card to give you it disappears physically that's that's the extent to which this thing is working against you have you seen people like that a guy tells a lady i love you car will jam him two hours later just for trying to verbalize that i'm considering marrying you car jams him his friend now comes and says Tor, since my friend has come me too i love you something happens let me tell you the meaning of that it puts a stigma on you and your family are you getting me now and they say these people there is death have you not seen lands that people bought land to build house why do you think we dedicate properties why do you think we pour oil on land i know a man who bought a property and went there to stroll in the night and receive the slap in the in the in the land true true story because the spirit there does not care whether you paid for it gave him a slap when listen when i was in secondary school we were in a temporal site before they moved us to the, pam the permanent site that temporal site used to be a hospital are you getting the point where the place that was like the mortuary 
was part of the place that was converted to our kitchen i tell you many students had encounters with strange beings you are entering to ease yourself and you will just hear sounds sounds that can give you a headache for a long time i remember our school getting ultimate power so that we we'll watch as their own strategy to deliver us from this this nonsense many students were initiated into occultism because of that but tonight we come in the name of the lord the captain of the army that this situation in your life must end i sat back there fighting tears when all the people were sharing their testimonies a testimony is simply what happens when the holy spirit becomes the only influence in a man's life any other spirit must create problems tonight daddy mommy sisters and brothers there is need to deal with certain things in our lives i saw poverty in my family as if we offended god coming from a pastor's family didn't change my family background your name can be solomon you will remain poor until what needs to be addressed be addressed that's why i told you tonight will be a night of massive deliverance listen as we begin to pray many of you who are sick will all of a sudden turn and find out that the sickness has gone really when you understand this you will know what a miracle is a miracle is what happens when the spirit that is causing that ailment departs this is what jesus did to the woman who was bound he looked at her in the spirit and he saw that a spirit had tied her for 18 years and he said woman thou art loose loose he didn't say thou art healed he said thou art loose the moment the spirit left he laid hands on her and straightened the physical body and there she went remember that madman at gathering that was an evangelist in a cave tearing himself into pieces the moment the spirit heard that jesus was coming they were waiting for him at the other side hallelujah mighty on your throne mighty on your throne i'll never forget one time i was praying praying seriously i was in the spirit and i had a vision i saw that there is a tree that is close to and where i stay and i didn't see that tree again i just saw a great beast like like a like a being the tail was a snake the eyes were big like human head imagine this head now like an eye two of them one here one here and the spirit was looking at me with fierce anger and all he told me is so you think you can bring god's people into prosperity and then it left that was it mighty on your throne mighty on your throne that's the reason why every time satan wants to destroy you the devil will now cause you to disrespect that person so your mother may be an anointed woman and you will fight and tear and say over my dead body for you to pray with me and satan will say amen let's go and then the oppression starts because your pride and your arrogance will not allow you to go to the person and say help me tonight we are going to cry to the king of kings i don't know if you came for this miracle service especially for those who are family people here you should never go back the same you see the results of people 4.8 five points they have always had that ability even when they were getting one point it's a spirit that makes that happen don't let anyone fool you you are not so daft human beings were created intelligent when you enter an exam hall and you write nonsense and come out with zero and smile and say it's just because i didn't read well is that really true how many of you watch film twice to explain it you sit down and watch a three hour film once and you can come out and recite that film completely with the hair of the actor's wife and that was you didn't read for it yet you spent six months or five months reading for one course and then at the end of it you come and fail it and get nonsense and you keep convincing yourself it's just that i didn't get it 
it is the reason why you can read a novel of 1000 pages but a lifetime you can't read half of the bible because there is a spirit stopping you if this was a novel some of us would say take this i will bring it for you next week friday and you will exhaust it but from the day you were born the day you were born till today you have not read up to one third of the bible one time you cried and prayed and fasted and started and three days later remember when you carried your devotional and did balance brought forward you started reading from two weeks back as a sign of repentance after you read it you now threw it away because you cannot help yourself in the flesh it takes the anointing of the spirit that's why he sends carpenters that's why he puts miracle services like this so that you can come under the influence of god's power how about genotype issues ss you get up and find out you are ss or as do you know the bible never mentions the issue of ss or as are you aware of that that thing was a technology that was fabricated by satan to stop people from getting married you see a beautiful lady who has a prophet in her womb to come and then one spirit just brings one one demonic report called ss and they say sorry we can't join you because you are going to kill your children for that devil is a liar in this place tonight i'm challenging you because when we rise we are going to pray the miracles will start as we pray you've got to be angry with yourself and say no enough is enough enough is enough we are come to mount zion where there is an innumerable company of angels where there is the blood of sprinkling the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than any covenant that speaketh better things than any ordinance the good news is that jesus has paid the price our job is to enforce that victory are you getting my point we enforce that victory by engaging the mysteries of the kingdom that bring for liberty we are going to pray that that power that has tied our destinies down it must let us go same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me yeah. your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me sing it two more times with faith in your heart same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me Rescue the earth lives in me, lives in me. Jump up on your feet as we sing it one more time. Sepa that conquered the rain lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. One more time with faith in your spirit. Say, power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Listen, deliverance, therefore, is a separation is the spiritual process that experientially brings the separation between you and the forces and influences the spirits that attempt to influence your life 
the legal separation brothers and sisters when that happens to you then you will see gates open by themselves when that happens to you you will see realms of favor all these things people pray on you must challenge those spirits you must challenge those spirits on behalf of yourself and your family and God is ready for us tonight I tell you God is ready for us tonight lift your voice in one minute and bless him for this word the body without a spirit is dead the body without a spirit is dead now I realize that there is a spiritual component to the challenges in my life lift your voice and thank him for this revelation Lord I now realize that there is a spirit component to the failure in my family there is a spirit component to the retrogression in my life there is a spirit component to my lack of admission there is a spirit component to my lack of marriage there is a spirit component to the poverty in my family are you praying tonight let a dissatisfaction rise from you Oh, come on, tonight is your night of liberty. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Just the voices. Sing it from your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me the power that can challenge any altar the power that can challenge any force of witchcraft any generational cause one more time sing it that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me Rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Same power, power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love, your love, say your love. hallelujah lift up your voice right now and mention everything you know that is a tragic event in your life and challenge it say it must stop tonight lift your voice oh come on koinonia you should be praying challenge the spirit challenge the spirit Behind failures, challenge the spirit. Behind marital delays, challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit of death from your family. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. He must let you go tonight. He must let you go tonight. Those outside, I hope you are praying. This is your destiny tonight. Shake it, 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 shake it
the spirit the body without a spirit is dead hallelujah 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 look up please your failure without the spirit that sponsors it is dead barrenness without the spirit that sponsors it is dead are you getting what i'm saying the key to liberty is to evict the spirit that initiates that thing for a body without a spirit is dead any cause without a spirit backing it is dead it's null and voice any pronouncement any enchantment without a spirit is dead therefore i want you to lift your voice and i want you to declare forget about the problems lift your voice and speak as a believer that you are to every spirit address it behold i give you power over snakes scorpions pray Oh yes, he must leave you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are spirits that will never allow you to walk in the anointing. They will never let your eyes open to see visions. And even when it opens, they will, they will bring you into error. So that everything you see misleads you into trouble. I'd like you to lift your voice again. Just do what I'm asking you to do. From the realm of the heavens, challenge powers, challenge forces over your finances. Oh, it must change. It must change. It must change. It must change tonight. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. My goodness. It's a strong anointing in this place. Oh, it must let you go tonight. Who says that breakthrough will not come? Who says that marriage will not come? Who says that cancer cannot die? Who says that HIV cannot live? Maka kapata. Lift your hands to the heavens. Embriakata. La tecatata, manto porotoskia, seketete, embrokotoskariadaba. Lift your hands. My goodness. All I see in this room and outside 
is fire that's all i see fire you will see deliverance tonight like you have never seen this one is the one that will bring your miracle listen as this prayer goes on miracles will start immediately many of you will start getting reports from your body many of you will be open to visions right now lift your hands hallelujah my goodness there is such a heavy unction on me it's for deliverance tonight it must give way for you to move forward at the count of three hear me listen i want you to shout jesus at the top of your voice at the top of your voice is a prophetic instruction as you shout it fire some of you visions your eyes will be open in the spirit you will see covens catching fire Mata Labata. father you told me tonight is a night of deliverance there are families under bondage there are businesses under bondage enough is enough let your fire bring deliverance are you ready now at the count of three may heaven invade this place one two three second gentleman i command covens i command altars i command spirits bring them out fire 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 brings deliverance tonight hallelujah hallelujah the holy ghost is showing me a vision we are going to shout it again please don't do it here i see many people vomiting poison physical poison as you shout physically it will come out lift your voice bata bata father anything that has been planted in the body of anyone right now as you shout jesus we have victim one two three it must let you go it must let you go you are coming out of their lives you are coming out of their lives you are coming out of their lives My goodness fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the Lord is giving me a word right now there are ladies here there is a spirit that comes to you in the night to oppress you to sleep with you right now lord where are they let that fire let that fire bring deliverance right now right now right now right now every spirit husband every manifestation every spirit wife every devil that has leads to you it leaves you now now right now He must leave you now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady. You see physical snakes. Where is that lady? 
physically physically it appears to you physically the lady is right here please come out i don't know who that lady is physical snake it appears to you you see it let me tell you something after this miracle service you will see advancement in your life in a way that will surprise you that's when you will know that satan is not as powerful as he looks hallelujah lift your voice and pray any covenant that ties me to anything of the fathers have been called out of every tribe every tongue i am i'm a new creation no longer connected to ancestry lift your voice and pray every altar that connects me to my fathers every witchcraft that attempts to connect me no i'm in christ I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Hallelujah. 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 We we'll pray for the sick, but there are miracles happening right now. When I call your, your case, just check it and come out here right now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lady. Please check it. There's like a growth right here at the side of your breast. Check it right now. You'll find out that it's gone. Check it right now. Right now. And make your way to the front. I see someone having severe pain. Your tie right under here your tie there is severe pain severe pain the lord is healing that person right now please check yourself and make your way to the front right now check yourself make your way to the front i'm seeing two ladies you came here with heaviness there is heaviness on your chest it's just like something heavy god is healing people can you appreciate jesus hallelujah There are miracles happening. Make your way to the front now. We'll give you room to testify. Stand here. All the people that are coming out for miracles, just stand here. Right now, there are miracles that are happening. I see someone, like your nose. It's like there is an irritation in your nose. While we were praying, you felt like there was fire on it. And now it's lifted. Now it's lifted completely. It's gone right now. Right now. Right now. I'm seeing someone severe peptic ulcer it hooks you hooks you very seriously as we started praying it just disappeared who is that make your way to the front right now right now right now i see a lady you hear a voice telling you you will die not a vision a physical voice physical voice it tells you you will die a physical voice physical voice it speaks to you physically can you help me all the please if i don't call anybody's case i'm going to pray for the sick i'm calling miracles cases that have happened help me um aaron would you help me just examine these people and then we'll take a few testimonies god is giving people miracles miracles right now miracles right now miracles are happening right now i'm seeing somebody listen there is a growth you came here with the growth at the back of your neck check it now it has disappeared check it now now and make your way to the front put your hand there and check it you will find out that that growth is gone completely i'm seeing two holes two holes of a left teeth being healed right now check it you won't find the hole again two holes Two holes of your teeth check it right now and make your way to the front my goodness god is doing miracles in this place there are miracles that are happening 
miracles that are happening i saw this same case in kaduna this morning now i'm seeing four people four people there is one guy and three ladies you have pile pile for one of the ladies when you go to ease yourself it's as if you are giving birth blood comes out go and check yourself now you find out that that pile is gone gone back to the devil go and check it please please we're not playing games don't sit back confirm your miracle and seal it i know there is a guy i saw a guy pile severe pile hallelujah the lord is showing me a lady tears just start coming out of your eyes without any you are not crying but it just starts coming out it's very embarrassing it starts coming out right now the lord is healing you wherever you are confirm it and make your way to the front right now confirm it and make your, your way to the front right now right now confirm it and make your way to the front we'll give all of them room to testify god is healing people right now i'm seeing someone with this finger look at me this finger this very finger that's what the lord is showing me there is a miracle happening on that finger this very one i don't know if it broke or something happened to it but there is a miracle happening to that finger right now right now i'm hearing a name gabriel 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 who is gabriel 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 the lord is bringing a a miracle for gabriel gabriel i've been fighting this name but let me bring it out i'm hearing a name asabe i don't know if it's a woman or somebody in a family asabe asabe i'm hearing that name who is asabe please confirm make sure you confirm it let's not huh you are asabe uh but i'm seeing another person again no eh this you are asabe. please stand here miracles everywhere come tell us very quickly come come please help us give aaron let's let's coordinate them okay come sir let's just listen to this give them the mic lawrence just testify tell us look at the crowd straight to the point what happened to you what is the miracle praise the lord i am the girl who the man of god prophesied i have an irritation in my nose since 2012 2012 yes. and now what happened every day once i put my hand i i always notice blood coming out but now I felt something drop out of my nose. That devil leaves you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Free. Give Jesus praise. God is doing miracles here. All kinds of miracles are happening in this place. Please, the next people. Let's have them come very quickly. Just turn and let's testify. Don't look at me. Look at the crowd. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I have this bonus. While we are patient. talking, there is a lady who will come strongly patient. under the anointing outside. Please speak that lady and bring her as we are talking the power of god is in fact two ladies two ladies outside mightily by the anointing please pick them and bring them yes ma'am hallelujah on my left thigh i have this burning sensation i don't even know what cause but i know that once it started it burns me as if i'm sitting on fire okay but now it's gone and since last hearing this voice saying i will die even when i was coming last week i had this fear that i was going to but right now Gone. completely gone give jesus praise god bless you yes please check yourself if you see a miracle you can come out we are going to pray for the sick but we want to take testimonies we'll give you an opportunity to tell us what god is doing mama please stand up please don't let mama sit down for god's sake give her a chair mama should not be kneeling down praise yes lord. please sometimes i normally feel pains in my chest sometimes i normally feel pains in my chest but now i feel very breathe in and out breathe in and out any pain any pain is there any pain is there any pain give jesus praise yes please praise god while he was preaching i was having peptic ulcer so peptic ulcer out, but while we started praying it left me and there's I'm one praying. more outside go and carry her Jesus. it left me immediately now i'm not feeling it again. no pain again give jesus praise yes ma'am praise, praise the lord I used to have this heavy pain on 
my chest since 2002. But um, when I went to see the doctor, they said it was pneumonia. It's, sometimes I can't breathe. Pneumonia. The pastor said I should, we should shout Jesus. I can't breathe. I can't shout too much. But the moment I shout Jesus, I fell on the floor. Everything just left you. No pain again. Praise the Let Lord. Let me pray for you. It never returns to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone with an eye problem. I don't know what the eye problem is, but it's living right now. Please confirm yourself. Eye problem. Check it. Check it. We are not playing games. Please check it. Check it. Eye problems. I'm seeing a miracle happening right now. Eye problem. Confirm it and come out right now. I'm seeing this at least 10 people with this case. At least 10 like the lower abdominal region right here. You've been having se severe pain. It's like something pulls you there. Check it right now. You'll find out that you receive a miracle. At least 10 people. Please make your way to the front. At least 10 people. Check it right now. God is doing a miracle. Don't sit back. Inside and outside. Lower abdominal region. Lower abdominal region. That miracle is happening right now. Right now. Right now. At least 10 people. 10 people with that pain. As soon as you check it, make your way to the front. Celebrate Jesus. God is healing them. They are coming. They are coming. All of you, you can come and stand here. The moment you receive a miracle, please stand here. They will confirm you. At least 10 ladies right at this lower abdominal region. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a gentleman. You came here with a throat condition. In fact, um, let me just describe to you. They are telling you they want to take you somewhere to cut the throat. It's like there is an elongation. Some, I'm seeing them saying they want to use, is it knife or something? And cut something that, uh, an elongation. Who is that person? The Lord is healing you right now. Right now. You can't swallow things. You always feel like it's like bone. But it's like there is something on your throat. Almost perpetually. Right now, check it, check it. Check it completely. The power of God is coming upon you. There is a lady. God is healing your mother. But the power of God will come upon you as a witness to that. Lord, where is that lady right now? Where is that lady? Identify her, oh God, by the power of God. Right now. Right now. Right now. Please bring the lady out. God is healing her mother right at home. And God is using what is happening as as a point of contact as a point of contact i'm still seeing breast lump disappearing like a lump i'm seeing one on the left left side please check it check it when you receive a miracle testimony is one way to seal it and keep it the lord is showing me three ladies your hair falls every time you go to comb your hair you literally comb your hair and bring out a copious amount of your hair that is removing this thing is a serious thing you have used medication and it has not stopped a miracle is coming to those people right now a miracle is coming to those people yes let's take the testimony quickly Please loud and straight to the point. Praise the Lord. Help I, us sound, please. Can you help us with this mic? I used to have this pain down my stomach here, but now I'm, I'm not feeling Completely okay. gone. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. How long has it been? been Come long. on, Koinonia. Let's not get too used to miracles in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. It never returns to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The next person, please. My goodness, look at what God is doing. God is giving people miracles. Go ahead. My own is like I'm pregnant. It's come like pain as in I'm pregnant and I've been complaining that for months. But today, when the prayer was going on, I felt relieved and my stomach is In fact, open. as she was talking, hold on. The Lord opened my eyes. There is a lady. Your stomach is already swelling. This is almost, it's even beginning to embarrass you. It's not just like a stomach protruding. You are feeling it very hard and stiff. Um, it's, you are afraid because it's looking like it's a situation of a fibroid please check it right now God is giving you a miracle God is giving you a miracle God bless you, bless you quickly 
when they say we should shout praise the Lord, so I now shout. The stomach used to pay me even before I come to Zaria, but I can't feel it again. Yes. Give Jesus praise. It never returns again. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. Um, recently, I started having this eye pain. When I'm walking, doing other things, one of the eye get blank and I don't see again. But now, after the prayers, I feel one sharp pain and I used to have this abdominal pain almost all the time. But it just left me immediately. Give Jesus praise. It never returns to you again. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to Jesus Christ. This abdominal pain starts two days ago. So, I came here and when I was praying, I just received total deliverance and complete deliverance please help them so that they don't fall on, on praise the lord the abdominal pain normally comes and go and when i was outside i was still feeling my stomach hooking such that i could not stand well i was bending and then when the man of god spoke i got up and stretched and to the glory completely of the lord, no pain again come on give jesus praise give jesus praise the lord mine is more of um creativity ideas that God is to give me every day when I'm in my quiet time and it's it happens that every time I try to push further I realize that there are a lot of setbacks distractions and uh, confusions that comes my way and right now, but what right happened? now when at the mention of the name Jesus I felt my body on fire I can't really understand what was going on. On fire, a restoration yes, of that creativity yes, comes, comes to you yes, in the sir. name of the Lord Jesus amen. Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I came here with a severe eye eating. At a shout of Jesus, everything just wiped out. Completely. Believe me, that name works. <laughs> yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I have a medical report from Shika concerning pain. Pain. You went to the hospital. Yeah. What did they say is wrong with you? They, did, they couldn't see anything. They couldn't see anything. Yeah. Okay. And when you were praying, you prophesied that there is a uh, ten people here that that God is working on yes. their system. And, and now what has happened to you? The pain is gone. The pain is completely Even gone. Give Jesus praise. Even the medical report is in my room. The medical report is in your room. Yeah. You go and check yourself, and you find out. All of you that were under the anointing, when you get up, don't just go back to your seat. Check. You will find out that all kinds of things have happened. You are not just falling for nothing. Praise the Lord. Praise the, praise the Lord. I'm trusting God for a new set of dentition. My teeth are just... Go ahead. <laughs> the power of God is on her. Oh, Father, complete what you have started in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. Because your faith can receive it, let it have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Next person, please. Praise the Lord. After we take this trip, people, when, um, it's okay. Um, there's okay. this pain that I usually used to have by, um, from under my armpit to the left side of my breast. Okay. So when um, you mentioned the case, I was not too sure if I was the one. But later you specify by saying the, your left side of your breast. I notice like it's swelling up and sometimes I very I feel like very, a swelling there. Yeah. And I now feel, have you checked it? Yes. I, Is there I, anything I there? Okay Completely gone. Come on, give Jesus praise. It never returns again in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for the spirit of fear, as in I do get scared a lot, but I now I'm free in the name the of The spirit of fear. Come. It never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are free from the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Yes, Praise please. the Lord. I want, to, I want to thank God for healing me from the lower abdomen. I used to have this pain right from child. When, when, I was, when I was young, I used to have this pain. But when you were praying and you asked us to shout Jesus, I, I feel relieved. I just Completely. want to thank God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my dear. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know. Sometimes second of August, this very month, this is my middle finger. Help her. Fire is landing on people. I started having pain around this region, affecting this finger mostly. I can barely use it, but since he prayed during the miracle session, 
I got healed. I announced, I saw I've been that shaking, baby, I've a been shaking it. I've been shaking it and no I've pain now. Come on, no give pain. Jesus praise, everybody. Praise. Where are the two ladies, Asabe, that I called? I called some two ladies, Asabe. The Lord is changing the story of your family. This Mama is Asabe. Huh? Please, you should not stress Mama. If she's if she's out because she's sick, Mama Kizona Zah make you a dua, please. You people should not stress this old woman. If she should, even when she's coming out, carry her with the chair and just keep her here. We'll pray for her. Please. The Lord is, is wiping the tears in your family. You believe that? When a word comes like this, it comes to give you liberty. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I end this oppression in this family right now. It goes forever. In the name of Jesus. Who has an elder brother? Who has an elder brother? Yes. Do, you, do you have an elder brother? Yes. What is he doing? He's a carpenter. He's a carpenter? Yes. The person I'm, I'm talking about didn't go to school though. Is your brother? Yes. Where is he? He's in the village. He's in the village. God is going to lift him. What is this thing that I'm seeing them <laughs> laughing at him and they are saying it? It's not his fault that he didn't go to school. Even you, it's by the grace of God that you are here. It's not like maybe yes. it's that your, your people are sponsoring you and all of that. It's the favor of God. Yes. But God, as a sign, go and tell him, call him after Koinonia. That the Lord said is going to connect him to a rich man. He should be faithful to that man. Amen. That man will bless him. Amen. Father, let there be breakthrough in this family. In the name of Jesus. Asabe. Gabriel. Oh, your name is Gabriel. Your name too is Gabriel, sir. Who is Titi Lyo? Titi Lyo. I'm hearing a name, Titi Lyo. Please let's save time. Our time is gone. Um, we still have to pray for the sick. Titi Lyo. I'm hearing the name Titi Lyo. Titi Lyo. Who is working here, sir? You're, you're working. You're both working. Okay. I'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing. The Lord is. Sir. It won't be too long. You are leaving Gusau. We spoke, at least we spoke. That one is not word of knowledge. We, we spoke about it, but it won't be too long. The Lord is lifting you to another place. Go and write it down. This will happen to you. It won't be too long. Write it down. You will come back and testify before them. It's not a disadvantage. It's something that will bless you in no small way. Because you have come with your heart open. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I lay my hands, I pray. Right now. That you bring your word to pass concerning his life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hear breakthrough for you, sir. This is what I hear. The Lord is saying I should announce breakthrough to you. Father, I hold his hands and I announce breakthrough in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Your mother is sick. What's wrong with her? She has been bleeding for the past one year. Bleeding? You, you can see the kind of demonic thing we are talking about here. Huh? Your mother bleeding for one year non-stop. How about that? And you fell under the anointing. You, you are just standing to agree yes, for her. Okay, no problem. We have a session for that. But since you came out, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Look at me. Do you believe God will touch your mother? Where is she? Where is home? Taraba. Taraba State. Yes, sir. You are from Taraba. Yes, sir. Lord, show mama mercy right now in the name of Jesus Christ. As it touches you, it touches her. Please don't just come out at will. Ah, you are related to her. Your sister is Titi Lyon. Yes, sir. Where is she? She's in Kaduna. What's she doing? She's schooling at Kaduna. She's schooling. Okay, let's pray for her. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, what are you doing? You. I'm a student, sir. Where? KPSS. Eh? Knowledge is power. Secondary school. Okay, knowledge is power. Yes, sir. Your sister is where? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Tell her. Is she married? No, sir. Tell her marriage is coming for her. Are you hearing me? You believe it? Because she has been praying about this. Your mother, where's your mother? Your mother has been joining her to pray. Yes, your mother even went to a man of God and they prayed about yes. this thing. Is that true? Your mother went to a man of God to pray. Go and tell her that the Lord is saying marriage comes for her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is an awesome God he raised. Hallelujah. Now, please, this is the time to minister specially to sick people. You 
you know the nature of our programs here we will need a lot of time so if you are not sick if you are escorting somebody please just bring the person and go back and once they pray for you don't wait for another prayer one touch is okay some of you when they pray for you you refuse you still stand back please once they pray for you just check yourself and go back praise the lord and then don't keep going back and coming out and saying you are doing this and that if you came with somebody who is sick now is the time to bring them out while we are praying please arrange them now is mama's time all these all our mothers they can make their way now our god is an awesome god he reigns from heaven above with the way for them. Clear the way for sick people. Those under the anointing, just, just carry them and keep them gently somewhere. hallelujah now let's save time while we're praying for the sick all of you begin to submit your prayer request please i permit you to put on your phone if you need to call your loved ones to send you prayer requests call them because what god is doing tonight is unusual call them and tell them there's fire upon this place they should submit their prayer request ushers please begin to go around those online those who are connecting with us through the internet they can also connect by faith as we trust God for miracles, worship team, please get set. You'll be giving us powerful worship songs. We'll just pray for our elderly ones. Let the Lord touch them and then he will give us peace. Please and please, um, when we pray for you, you clear the way. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. Awesome is your name. You do mighty, you do glory, you do glory, you are your name, awesome is your name, awesome is your name. May God use you to wipe the tears of your parents. Listen, let me tell you, any child, hear me, I'm saying this especially to we young people, any child that makes himself an instrument of pain to your mother do you know you bring a curse upon your life when you do that whatever spirit is bringing hardship on our mother and making her children not to succeed the way it should pray for her children in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well done, sir. Please sit down. Your dad. Welcome, sir. Straight, straight to the point. His legs are swollen. Because it's been long I saw him. He doesn't breathe well. And at the same time, he's having problems with mama. None of his children look at him except me. The same problem that mama is having. Like, but it's just similar thing. We are eight. Oh, it's paining you, sir. We are going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards our daddy. Please participate in the service. That's why you came. Hallelujah. No, no, no. Daddy, sit down. Please sit down. Sit down. Please, let's stretch our hands. 25 years of witchcraft. This is witchcraft. This is not sickness. 25 years of wickedness and oppression. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. 
let there be deliverance oh god Baba, I'm going to pray for you. It's where we are praying for you now. Jesus Christ is going to touch you. Father, let Baba return with a testimony. I lay my hands in the name of Jesus and I cancel the plague of witchcraft in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, after today, check him and don't cry. Don't cry, eh? Clean your tears. Clean your tears. Baba, they will watch you and they will see the improvement and you will let us know. Since it's not something we can check, you are already walking in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of God will come here right now. As I lay my hands upon you, I want you to believe. We all came here because we trust Jesus Christ and there will be a miracle. Those of you who are sitting down, be connecting to the healing anointing, you are the one who will be doing this. The goal is not for one person to do this. That as you are watching, something will come upon you. Help us. Thank you, Jesus. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do my You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things, you do glorious things, you're for God, awesome is your name, you do mighty things, you do glorious things, you're a faithful God, awesome is your name. Look at a very serious situation. Can you flash this, this baby? Look at, can you believe, listen, can you believe for God's sake that this baby, as beautiful as this child is, the brain is not developing? Look at this. Who told you the brain is not developing? The doctor, and we've done CT scan. You've done CT scan. You have your evidence. They said the brain is not developing. Remember, remember our teaching. A body without a spirit. There must be a spirit that is stopping this brain. How can a baby like this? This is an apostle. This is a prophet. This is a great man. Oh, what male or female? Male. Male. Man of God in the making. And a spirit come. How will you like to have a child? That do you know what it means for the brain not to develop? That child becomes like an imbecile forever. In the name that is above all names we lay hands upon this child we are not only praying that god will heal him but god will use him my god i pray right now let the brain begin to develop we cause the spirit that is responsible for this wickedness right now in the name of jesus
out of her right now. Let her go. Out. Out of her. Out. Out. Release her right now. Madam is saying, sorry, who brought her? I say, I, I go village, now I'm mad from village. I go election. I will charm from village. Look at this. Mama went for election. They fired something upon her head. Now she's mad. Is she mad? Is she your dog now? Yes. You are mad. No, you are. You are not mad in the name of Jesus. Say, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. In the name of Jesus. Whoever organized that charm on your head, it returns back to them sevenfold. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mama, I'm praying for you right now. Every charm, every enchantment, you came to this place tonight. It ends in the name of Jesus. You are her daughter. You are her daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even as it releases your mother, it releases you. Mama, you are free. In the name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong? Accident, sir. Accident. Yes, sir. This guy, for a long time, the spirit of death has been following you. Eh? Come. Do you know why the spirit of death is disturbing you? I'm looking at you. Don't feel embarrassed. Eh? I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing you smoking something. Eh? Tell me the truth. Don't tell lies. This is what death would have killed you. You are smoking a. Uh, uh, what do they call this thing? Eh? In the hem, you go. Yes, sir. Is that not true? Yes, sir. You are smoking. The devil wants to kill you. Yes, this is look at look at this. Look at this. Can you see this? Look at this. Because this is not the first time. Every time I see this guy, I see a whirlwind on his head. You you know that the devil is after your life. You are now adding ego to it. Jesus came that you'll be saved. Are you getting me? You are ready to give your life to Jesus Christ genuinely. Eh? Oh, oh, you are. Or oh, you are still with those your friends. Yes, sir. You are still with those your friends. Yes, sir. We cancel those relationships right now. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing you sitting down with a group of people. Yes. They are smoking and they are giving you to smoke, but you are saying you have repented yes, and they are even laughing at you. Yes, you have to leave them. We cancel that relationship in Jesus' name. The Bible, hear me. Don't say I'm not doing it. But I'm sitting down where others are doing it. The Bible says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate day and night. I curse that madness in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for supernatural healing. Look at me. Look at me. Lift your hands. Forget about the wound. Lift it up. Careful. You broke the hand. Oh, it can't lift. Oh, I see. No, no, no. If it can't lift, don't, don't harm yourself. I thought you broke your bone. That's why I was asking you to lift it. Father, let there be a miracle right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. And anybody who smokes it go in this place. If you know you smoke it go or codeine, altar, once I make the altar call, just run and come and kneel down here because tonight is your night of salvation please don't play games with your destiny anything you smoke anything you drink that is outside the jurisdiction of decency the moment there's time for altar call please make your way here we love you but then the lord wants to touch you let's hurry up because our time is gone your name is here. out
laying on the request right now. At the same time, an altar call is called. An altar call will be going. Those who need Jesus Christ, you are here right now, inside and outside. There are some of our brothers who are smokers and ladies. The ones that I spoke to. Now is the time. You can come before the presence of God. Don't feel bad. We're a family. And any other person. There are those who are saying, Lord, I'm tired of the way my life is. I need a new beginning. As we pray, please come and wait here. Join this lady very quickly. Celebrate them as they come. Inside and outside. Please, let's save time. Celebrate them as they come. Inside and outside. God bless you. A new beginning. God is giving you a new beginning. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. You are saying, Lord Jesus, I make up my mind to walk with you. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? God is saving sinners. Keep coming from outside. Please clear the way for them if they are coming. Salvation is a very serious issue. Clear the way for them so that they'll come. Don't let any devil stop you. You are welcome. I know we're out of time, but please make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front. We love you. No man condemns you. He can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you here. I don't care what you have done or what you have not done. I want you to know that His Majesty can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again. I'm tired of the way my life is. I surrender everything to you. Seriously and completely. From this night, take over my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Let your life come upon me. I break free from habits, from sins, and everything that destroys my life. From today, I'm a child of God. I am saved. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for these ones. Unashamedly, they have come before you. Preserve them by your power. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you will use them mightily. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of sin over your life. You will never return, especially for those of you who are victims of addictions and smoking. You will never return to it again in the name of Jesus Christ. That power is broken from off your life in the name of jesus christ now i want you to follow a gentleman they will have your details and then on tuesday unfailingly please be around um meet with the prayer department and um will fire you up you'll be with them for at least a month they will guide you the gentleman is waving his hand salute them everybody congratulate them stretch your hands towards a prayer request in one minute please everybody rise we're rounding up stretch your hands towards a prayer request your request is here begin to speak prophesy prophesy over it in the name of jesus christ prophesy over it prophesy over it lord unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come are you praying Lord do miracles every spirit that is responsible for the troubles that are written here we judge that spirit every spirit every covenant every influence every spirit responsible for barrenness here yeah. responsible for any setback in the name of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it lord let your people have testimonies in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ we declare that every request every request that is presented here is turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ and you will stand to testify before the people of God in the name of Jesus Christ I pray now lift your hands and receive the prophecy 
I decree and I declare over you every confusion in your life every cry for direction right now in the name of Jesus may you receive direction for the next level of your life receive direction for the next level of your life receive direction for the next level of your life every area of confusion I arrest it right now you will hear a voice from behind telling you this is the way in the name of Jesus Christ for those who are students I pray for your academics the exams that are about to come your best result in your various institutions this exam is what will produce it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may you record five points in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray for every family represented here whatever has stagnated your family by this anointing I declare move forward move forward move forward in the name of Jesus Christ everything that has covered your glory so that the glory of the Lord upon your life will not be seen in the name of Jesus we tear that veil off we tear that veil off by the power of the Holy Spirit whoever needs to help you before next miracle service I call them forth into your life mysterious help us mysterious help us in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you fresh grace for prayer fresh anointing for prayer every lack of passion for the things of God I kill it right now in the name of Jesus every carnality and flesh and wordlessness and prayerlessness that is eating up your life it dies a natural death here tonight in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you with these hands that are lifted go and begin to produce results go and heal the sick go and open doors for the oppressed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle marriages we release those marriages right now I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle jobs we release those jobs right now please believe me as I pray we release those jobs right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ anyone here who the devil is eyeing for death that the devil has said you will not see the end of this year in the name of Jesus we lift up that embargo we lift up that embargo favor like you have never seen receive it right now open doors like you have never seen receive it right now breakthroughs like you have never seen receive it right now I speak life to every dying thing in your life in the name of Jesus Christ whoever has rejected you may they look for you in the name of Jesus Christ I command prophetic dreams mysterious spiritual experiences may God show you the solution to your problems in dreams and visions whoever is behind the failure of your life we command judgment upon them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I prophesy unto you access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to deep revelation access to insight in the spirit whenever they are looking for men to favor may they find you may they find you in the name of Jesus you are blessed in the city and blessed in the country you are blessed in your going out and blessed in your coming in every tongue that rises up against you will be judged in the name of Jesus I declare that the seal of the blood is upon you you have no covenant with failure you have no covenant with death may God use you mightily 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 I declare may the mantle of honor come upon your life that mantle that makes men honor you mysteriously I release it upon your life receive it in the name of Jesus 
receive it in the name of Jesus the mantle of honor I pray for you extraordinary intelligence levels of mental acumen in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ extraordinary intelligence I cast out the spirit of fear fear of the future fear of death I rebuke it from your life in Jesus name and every depression upon your spirit I release you from it right now every voice that has told you you will not succeed we cancel that voice right now in the name of Jesus finally I pray for you passion for the things of God hunger for intimacy with the Holy Spirit grace for fasting and prayer genuine fasting and prayer access to spiritual power activations of the gifts of the spirit visions and and the move of the spirit upon your life in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise in the name of jesus all those worshiping with us for the first time please make your way to the front right now very quickly we're really out of time we have two minutes and we're out please celebrate all those who are worshiping with us some have come from far some from near different states please come we have a prayer and a blessing for you celebrate them koinonia keep clapping they are coming may god bless all of you who have invited them their lives will never be the same in the name of jesus christ hallelujah for all of you who have come here this is koinonia god bless you for being here we're here every fridays is a meeting that is put together by eternity network international you're welcome to fellowship and worship with us again and again and your life will never be the same in the name of the lord jesus christ stretch your hands towards them saints of god and let's bless them we release the blessing upon this house over your life no keep standing don't worry you can stand i prophesy to you in the name of jesus you will leave this place and return with dramatic testimonies whatever you came here with is turned into a testimony in the name of jesus christ i see two of you standing here there's miracle marriage coming for two ladies here specifically i'm seeing two ladies that's the reason why you came specifically i prophesied miracle marriage for you in the name of jesus christ for one of you the person you are going to marry is a banker and he will come to you before october your wedding will happen before december 31st in the name of the lord jesus christ we decree and declare over your life you will carry an unusual unction and everyone who sees you will know that you have come before the presence of god there is someone here you are standing you are going to have like one week of prophetic encounter stretch one week every night repeatedly you're going to have different people come to teach you certain things and on the sixth night you're going to have an impartation it's like a hand that will be laid upon you it's not demonic in the name of the lord jesus christ we bless you return with evidences return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ thank you so much for coming we love you and we honor you please follow the gentleman waving his hands hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.